All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Barney Arnold, and uh, welcome to the Carlisle Select Board on Monday, February thirteenth. I'm I'm uh, being uh, broadcast in the room. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We have some new technology for those of you that are hybrid. Hopefully, it means you can hear us better too. Um, so I have with me um, four of the members of the board, and Nathan is joining us remotely. Hi, Nathan. And uh, we also have our town administrator who will be back just momentarily. Let me go through the agenda very quickly, and then we'll come back and begin. So we have community input at 7 o'clock, appointments and resignations, followed by the um, ARPA committee. Uh, there are two recommendations that we're going to consider tonight. And we will hear from the Public Safety Facilities Task Force about their recommendations. And that will be followed by a review of the FY24 budget and the annual town meeting warrant requests. At 9.15, we will um, have a discussion about a particular uh, human resources bylaw change that may, may be on the town meeting warrant, followed by the town administrator's report, liaison reports, and a quick review of the warrants before we adjourn. Uh, there will not be any minutes to approve this evening. So going back to community input, um, I see we have some guests here in the audience. Is anyone here in person interested in offering a comment during the community input time? Is there anyone uh, joining us remotely that would like to make a comment now? If you would like to, you can raise your hand or um, turn on your video and or do your chat. doesn't look like it. All right, well, then we will move on. Um, so let's begin with the appointments and resignations. Uh, we have no resignations. Um, we do have um, one appointment. Um, Ryan, do you want, no, just the first one is about um, for a staff position. Ryan, would you like to take care of explaining that one to us? Yes, thank you. So the DPW foreman was advertised this open position, which has been open for, for a bit now, was advertised internally. We had three strong candidates from our DPW. Uh, Jim or James Hall is seen here, Scott and Shane, all hardworking members of our department. We were thrilled with their uh, vision for the department, their leadership, their experience, their knowledge, and, and their candor during the interviews. Um, all three of them would have been excellent selections, but but Jim who's been serving as our interim, had the requisite experience and vision for what the DPW foreman could do and some improvements that we could make. He has served in this community for 28 years and uh, was also recommended highly by Gary for, for his abilities and his service and his growth as an employee over those 28 years. So we're very pleased to recommend to the select board, James Hall for appointment as a permanent appointment as our DPW foreman. We have a motion, please. I move that the select board appoint James Hall to fill the vacant Department of Public Works foreman position effective immediately. I have a second. Second. Thank you. So any discussion? <coughs> um, I think I probably speak for the whole board in saying that we're really glad that James is um, going to take this position and uh, we know he's going to do a great job for the town. So thank you. Uh, all those in favor, let's see, we'll do a voice vote. Roll, roll. I mean, a roll call vote. That's what I meant to say. Did I say that? No. <laughs> roll call vote, please. Um, Arnold, aye. Brown, aye. Modell, aye. Reed, aye. Snell, aye. Excellent. The motion passes unanimous. And then we have two appointments to the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Who would like to move those appointments? I move that the select board vote to appoint Kath Hardcastle of 38 Litchfield Drive and Dave Butcher, 60 Ledgeways, to serve on the Environmental Sustainability Committee. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Nathan. And if you uh, look in your packet below that, you'll see, um, uh, well, a couple pages down, you'll see the... Um, uh, letters of interest from both uh, Dave and Kath, and also a um, letter from Debbie Bentley representing the Environmental Sustainability Committee saying that they voted unanimously, unanimously to support 
the appointment of these two members. Is there any more discussion? All right, let's do this by a roll call vote. Arnold, aye. Brown, aye. Modell, aye. Reed, aye. Nell, aye. Excellent. The motion carries unanimously. Um, just one quick question. Um, I didn't do it in the middle because it didn't impact how I would vote. But does this fill out that committee? Good question. Um, I think it probably is close to it. I don't remember the exact number that are on there now. Um, this may make it 10. How many did we offer? I think it was 10. Debbie Bentley is two square. Oh, hi, Debbie. You're saying yes. Do you want, you're saying, uh, do you want to make a quick comment or you're saying yes, that does fill out the committee? Uh, yes, it does fill out. It brings our number up to 10, which okay. is the number that was originally on there. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, I having uh, been the liaison to the committee, I've, I think both of them are going to be great additions. Okay, so let's move on then to the um, ARPA request. And I see that Scott Triola is here. Hi, Scott. Um, yeah, please come on up and join us. It's Scott is um, the chair of the ARPA committee and Kate Reed is also a member of the committee and John Kaufman is the third member of the committee. So tell us about these two recommendations, please. Thank you very much. We have uh, two, the ARPA committee has two recommendations for your consideration this evening. I'm providing an updated um, handout because the committee met this morning and voted on the second recommendation. So the first recommendation, um, I'll vote one, is that the ARPA committee recommends that the select board approve $2,800 in ARPA funds to be used for stop the bleed training workshops as requested by the Board of Health. Um, and previously, I had provided their request form. Essentially, this would this would provide funding for four workshops that the uh, would be conducted by the public health nurse to do these stop the bleed workshops, which is are about um, having people training them how to stop uh, bleeding <laughs> in in accident situations. Um, and I think uh, Kathy is is might be in the meeting, but essentially, one of the things we were talking to her about was making sure that because these are essentially, we view them as pilot uh, training sessions that could be funded through ARPA initially, um, to really think about how those four workshops are, are uh, strategically used. And so uh, they have a plan for each workshop to um, make this available to keep people in the town, to the schools, to residents. So uh, they have a, what I would consider a pretty well thought out plan about how to, how to best utilize these four workshops. And if they're successful, then, um, you know, more workshops could be done, potentially funded through uh, individuals paying a fee to do it, like we do for some other training programs, or um, perhaps it comes part of the budget, or they've looked at grants, there's not much there, but essentially this would provide the funding to do the first four. Um, and I don't know if you want me to also move on to the second vote, or if you want to consider the first one. Well, let me pause for a moment and see if anybody has any questions about that one. Authorized ask for my question. You're on that right. Okay. Um, uh, well, I how many how many people would be able to attend each session? I believe, and if Kathy, if you're out there, I think it was on the order of like 15, 10 to 15. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. It's eight to ten attendees per workshop. Okay. With one public health nurse. Right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The idea was also that you know it could be scout groups and then and then the fundraising could be later. You know, uh, for instance, a scout could group could pay a fee down the line, or they themselves could you know learn to do some of the training. So it's, it's meant to spread out mm -hmm. into the community. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's let's see if we can vote on both of these together. So let's go ahead and talk about the second one. Sure. The second one um, is a request from the town accountant, and that is for um, uh, fees that are required for an external a single audit, which is not typically something the town requires because it's tied to meeting a threshold of federal funds. But due to the large amount of ARPA funds, um, we now are required to do this additional audit. And so this fund, th th these funds is 4750 would be used to pay for that. Um, and so the ARPA committee 
discussed this this morning and took a vote, and we recommend that the select board approves $4,750 in ARPA funds to be used for, this is for fiscal year 22, external single audit as requested by the town accountant. And I'll also note that the committee supports using the ARPA contingency administrative account for this expense subject to the town accountant's agreement that this is an eligible administrative expense. We voted in favor 3-0. We have approximately, if you recall, we approved um, a contingency in admin funds a while back, back almost a year ago. We have used very little of that. We have about 22,000 remaining and it's, I think it's in the, it's in the handout. Um, and we had previously talked about using that account for this. And I, I emailed Kelly today and she agreed that we could use uh, the contingency administration fund. So we don't have to create a new account. Um, it would just come out of that. And there's mm -hmm. plenty of funds in that. And so that's, we just wanted to provide that additional guidance uh, for Kelly. And, and she, she responded today and said that that would be appropriate. Okay, good. So do we need to um, include that second line in the motion, do you think? I don't know. Um, I you think it always do. So just to be on yeah, the I, side. I wasn't sure. So I just included it. Yeah. Um, okay. I think it would be helpful. And then, you know, I think Kelly is, is very buttoned up in her process and paperwork. So I think it's good to just have that yeah. for the record. Okay. Yeah. It was originally contemplated that that administrative, that we, we thought we were going to have an extra audit. We asked for that administrative budget, cover that sort of thing. But then when we finally got the bill, there was a little question is like, should we spend it, spend that money on it or not? Is it really, you know, well, no, this is, this is putting the, I would say the belt along with the suspenders. Uh, yeah, especially when you're having an external audit to have the audit, yeah. <laughs> a good paper trail for the actual audit funds is probably not a, the worst idea. <laughs> so, so this is kind of why we're here. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Any um, discussion about this or questions? Um, it just, just, I'm sorry. It was relative to the ARPA dollars. And can you just refresh my memory? There are like four major categories um, that they covers and maybe go ahead. Uh, well, the, uh, so ARPA, we as a town had received, and I do have the numbers in front of me, uh, one point, one point, yeah, just under one point, one point five, six, nine, eight million dollars in ARPA funds. Uh, we designated the entire amount to revenue replacement so we can use those funds for any government uh, expense. So we're not tied to any particular category or eligibility. As long as it's a valid government expense, we can deploy those funds with, with the select board approval on anything um, the town spends money on, essentially. Um, to this point, we've uh, approved uh, let's 835,000 of that. We have 734,000 remaining. And we can speak briefly for you about that after yeah. this vote, just to give you kind of a look down the road a little bit, very briefly. Okay, so let, yeah. So um, Dave, then you had a comment or question? Uh, yeah, well, we were talking about, um, you know, the the two, the two ARPA requests and, you know, the motions. And I think somebody said, do we need to add the second line in that? I'm just wondering what second line are we referring to? Yeah, in right. each of the motions in the package, I only see one line. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll read it to you. It's just indicating that it can come out of that administrative account that um, Scott was referring to. So the motion, well, why doesn't somebody make the motion, including that second line, and then Nathan can hear it then. Okay, so you, you guys have something I don't have that. I don't yeah. have it. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, all right. That makes sense then. Okay. I move that the select board vote to approve $2,800 in ARPA funds to be used for the Stop the Bleed training workshops. And... The other is this uh, to move that the select board approves forty-seven or four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars in ARPA funds to be used for the fiscal year twenty-two external single audit. Is there more than I need. To yeah. Add? Then then the little second okay. sentence. Select board supports one. using the ARPA contingency administrative account for this expense, subject to the town accountant's agreement that this is an eligible administrative expense. Second. But Kelly said it was. It's like she did, but this was the Department of Redundancy before department. you checked with her, right? Belt right. suspenders, right? Yeah. This was yes. written before we got the answer back from her today. I think we should amend the motion to not be redundant. Oh, you know, it just would be giving uh, people comfort. All right, uh, David. Done, done, um, done, done. You know. All right. May I have a second, please? I did. Second. Thank you. All right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll have a roll call vote, please. For there. 
Arnold Eye. Brown Eye. Modell Eye. Modell Reed Eye. Snell Eye. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Both uh, motion carries. So both of those ARPA like uh, requests are approved. Yeah, um, so Scott, yeah, tell us a little bit about the fund and where you think yeah. uh, what's what's to look forward to. Again, this is just uh, you know, just to, we have a we have a couple of minutes. So you had asked to provide if if there was an update on the actual expenditures. So what I handed out and what Nathan, what you don't have, um, I handed out a hard copy and I can send it via email. Is the um, the expenditure report that uh, Kelly provides to the ARPA committee each month. So this is current as of the end of January. And we review this as an ARPA committee uh, two weeks ago. And um, essentially what I wanna highlight is that, so we've, the at the bottom you can see the total approved by the uh, select board and the total like received by Carlisle, a total available 740, 742, 603,000. Um, on the right side, you can see the ex actual expenditures for fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23. Um, and then you can see what's available of what was approved. And you can see that the majority of funds that were approved are still available. So we've essentially checked in with all of these different projects. And uh, the bottom line is that the, we expect the money for the most part to be spent for every project. In some cases, um, especially the capital projects, none of the funds have been expended because the projects aren't done and or we haven't gotten the bill yet. And and I did email Jerry today and I know Jerry's back there. For example, <laughs> the, the Gleason RTU was one where early on we weren't sure if we would be able to use ARPA funds because that was procured prior to ARPA and ARPA requires federal procurement um, policies be followed. And I just confirmed with him today that Andy from TMS had reviewed the process and, and, and we can in fact use ARPA funds. So that's $124,000 that is, is approved. We will be using that for the Gleason RTU. We just haven't gotten the bill yet. The, 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 um, the school Wilkins project, if you recall, uh, we took a step back to do a study. That study is ongoing. We expect all that money to be spent. Um, so there isn't anything I would point to here where we would say, let's amend or pull back any funds. I think it's just going to take a little bit of time. And, you know, looking forward, what I'm thinking about, and I'm just speaking personally, is that, you know, if, if we have now a little less than $742,000 available for ARPA, uh, we're currently in the process, the finance committee will be meeting with the select board of getting a, a much, you know, a good handle on the fiscal 24 capital requirements. Uh, work is being done to uh, get a tighter look at the five-year capital plan and fiscal 25. And I think as part of that process, uh, what I'm doing is, you know, wearing two respective hats to say, which projects do we think could or should be funded using ARPA funds? Which funds, which capital projects that are required should go before the town as part of the capital warrant? And really come up with a plan over the next, you know, by June where we say, look, let's keep X number of dollars in reserve for ARPA for unexpected things or new ideas like, like that are brought forth for the Council on Aging or the Board of Health to help the community. But we don't wanna be stuck in a situation where we have a lot of funds and we wanna do a capital project. We see the lead times involved. We do have to commit funds by December 24th. They have to be expended six months after that. So we may wanna really by the end of this calendar year, really know how we're spending the bulk of our ARPA funds. And so I think as the capital plan comes together, as the budget planning comes together, I think looking at which things we want to fund through ARPA versus put it on the warrant and, and bring the town meeting is going to be a crucial question. So we're not doing that tonight, but I expect that to happen over the next month, especially for fiscal 24. And there are ample number of projects we can, we can, um, use for ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. There's no lack of opportunity to use the funds. But are you, are you guys, I think I agree with that, but are you guys um, guiding, I realize you're wearing two hats, sort of FinCom or, or Ryan? We're having a lot of conversation. Tonight we're going to have a pretty lengthy conversation about capital expenditures that are on the budget. Yep. And I, you know, we have the, as Ryan 
it's not a big fan of it yet, but we have a multi, we do have a multi-year list. Are you flagging those things in the, in, on the near term of that list that, yeah. Okay. But you've not shared that yet, right? No. And it, honestly, it's, uh, FinCom is meeting on Thursday of this week. And we'll, part of what we've, we're getting a revised, we have a revised capital plan from the school. So there's, what we just got to get the whole list. And there are things on there, for example, we received the request today for the phone system as an ARPA request. Uh, that's one where, you know, it's $62,000, something I think. It, it's also on our list tonight, right? Yeah. So, but there's other things like yeah. the school elevator that is time sensitive. That may be one where we say, okay. because it's time sensitive right. and it fits well within that structure, maybe we yeah. use ARPA funds or we look to use ARPA funds for that. Other okay. projects, due to the, their nature of the procurement, might not be well served so with the ARPA. Basically, you got to spend the money by roughly a year from now. Yeah, and we don't want to spend it all today, but, but you, also, wanna, you don't want to leave it on the table. We won't leave it on the table. Um, but again, if we use it for capital, like we approved the like the Gleason RTU a year ago, and we still haven't. The, the lead times are long, and so we, if we're looking at, you know, if we have the mid to Say the end of December 24, we yeah. better have that project greenlit by a year before that. Do you are, are there any on the current list that you see, or maybe Bill or any or Jerry, anybody that's close to that, where we run a risk that those the those already approved won't make the June 2024 deadline? I don't no, I don't think so. It's not June 2024. It's December, December of December. no. You have to expend by June. Oh, by no. June twenty twenty four. You have to commit by December twenty. Right, but you have to expend by by June twenty twenty six months after that. Right. So we've we've no no twenty four. We've we've twenty five. Oh, so we actually have a year and a half. So. We have two fiscal oh. years. Okay, we have a lot of time. Okay. Well, a lot of time, but again, if it's it could yeah, be eighteen by months. Fast. It could, yeah, it could be eighteen months between yeah. approving and actually getting the bill, and we don't want to be stuck with. Right. And so, I mean, just long lead times. And I just think we have to be, you know, strategic yeah. about it. And yeah. we're going to know enough, I think, about our capital plan by in the next few months that. Okay. And if we maybe we maybe we start a, a plan earlier just so that we, we know we're getting in. Mm -hmm. So there's some moving parts there, but that's what we'll be discussing in the next month to two months versus in a very discreet request like tonight. And, and we, you know, we have to remember we can use it for any government expense, but we cannot put it in any kind of stability, stabilization fund or, you know, savings. So it actually has to be spent. And we want to spend it on things that we know, you know, we, we, we have done, we have done some, some supported programs that are not part of our normal budgeting process. Um, but, you know, especially if we're doing capital projects, we really want to focus on things we know we have to do as a town. Um, yeah. Good. Um, any uh, question? Further questions, of Scott? We got just a couple of minutes before we're going to move on. Nice TVs, by the way. Yeah. Art <laughs> <laughs> for money <It's> everywhere. <laughs> uh, this was, no, this is Peg Funds. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thanks a lot, thank Scott. You. Yes. And thank you, Kate. Thank, thank you. you for coming, Scott. All right, well, good. Um, I can see that I am giant on two screens behind you guys. Oh, and well, and you're even more giant in the one right in front of us. Yeah, yeah. you should. Yes. You are all around us, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, and the pink shirt shows up yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> and, and you can hear us for a change. I, I take it. Yeah, I can hear you. Wow. <laughs> it's a little daunting though, seeing myself in the room. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, um, Public Safety Facilities Task Force, I see, is here in force. Um, please bring up chairs if, if you want to get a little closer. Um, Lee or Tom or Bill, who else is here? Um, yeah. Right, so uh, anybody on um, the Zoom from uh, there's an extra the mic. committee? Uh, I want it. Yeah. You know, I worked in television, and I don't think I've ever seen this many televisions. <laughs> and that wasn't a leak. This is a joint meeting? Uh, well, um, I think you all posted this as a joint. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Christine Lear and Jerry Lerman here as the chairs, and 
you may uh, happy to have you introduce the others. Are we? Are you? Um, did you post this as a joint meeting? So would you like to open the meeting? Do you have a quorum or? We definitely have a quorum. Okay. The whole gang's here. <laughs> okay. No, I think might be online. Um, so uh, I would like to call the um, Public Safety Facilities Task Force uh, meeting to order at 727 p.m. Um, uh, the members of the task force are Tom Bellotta, myself, Jerry Lerman, Bill Rizzo, Isors, and Ingo Zagari. 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 <laughs> um, and I should say, my name is Christine Lear. Uh, so uh, we voted at our uh, February 7th meeting um, on the recommendations that we're bringing to you tonight. Um, we did, um, you have this all written in your packet. Um, these recommendations were developed uh, after a detailed examination of the current police and fire stations. It is our conclusion that neither of these buildings addresses the needs of the departments at the moment, at this moment in time, and they certainly will not adequately meet, meet the needs going forward. Um, we won't go through all the details that we went through with you on December 13th. I'm sure that's your nighttime reading already. Um, we have um, determined that a combined public safety building would be too costly to pursue. Um, none of the existing town-owned lands were deemed suitable, and so it also required the town, yeah, that's good, I see, for town to um, purchase a piece of property. So that wouldn't be helpful at this point. Um, uh, if we were to build on the site of either existing station, we would have to, uh, well, either existing station, we'd have to find a temporary location for those services. Uh, but we're not recommending that at this point. So um, if a completely new structure were built for, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. We did not consider the possibility of um, regionalizing either police or fire as it was outside the scope of our mandate. We assumed that the police department would continue to operate in the same manner it does today, allowing for future growth due to Carlisle's growing population. The possibility of regionalizing dispatch function was also discussed, but we believe would not achieve a significant reduction in either staffing costs or space requirements. As for the fire department, the unique character of the fi fire department no of, of Carlisle, no fire hydrants um, and on-call firefighters make the equipment and the staffing requirements not amenable to regionalization. So to summarize, we've tried to examine all the possibilities for a fire station and the police station. From the options we've examined, uh, we have agreed to make the following recommendation recommendations to the select board. Beginning with the fire station, uh, because the building codes and the structural issues uh, make it too costly to build on top of the existing fire station, as so many of us thought it was possible, we recommend that a new structure be constructed adjacent to the existing structure. There is adequate space on the existing site to make this possible. We've talked to the town building inspector, who agrees that this option is worth exploring and has the following benefits. No acquisition of new property. It would be it would be less costly than building a completely new building since the existing structure would still be in use. Building an annex or a separate building rather than addition, uh, an addition will avoid triggering costly requirements such as adding a sprinkler system to the existing structure. The fire department could continue to operate out of the existing structure while the new construction the new construction is underway. It will allow for transition from an on-call fire department to a full-time uh, department at some time in the future. And some of the existing infrastructure, like the wells, the septic, et cetera, uh, will be used by the annex structure as well. To further explore this possibility, we recommend that the select board fund a feasibility study of about $20,000 that would determine the details of this project and the estimated cost. We have, we have a sketch provided by Brian Soros, Chief Brian Soros, that would be a starting point. If the study determines that the cost is reasonable, the next step would be to seek funding from the town to develop a complete design document and put the project out for bid. Uh, should I just keep going and then we'll come back? Uh, yes, let's do the whole thing and then, okay, thank you. For the police station, we recommend that the police station be renovated on its existing site to provide the functionality and expansion capability that, that was lacking, that is lacking in the existing building. As with the fire station, this approach has the following benefits. No acquisition of new property. The police department could continue operating in the existing structure while the new construction is underway. It is less costly than building a completely new building since most of the exi ex existing structure would still be used. And 
no new infrastructure or wells of wells and septics or electricity is required. There are several possibilities for this approach that need to be explored due to the size constraints of the site, which is what we've learned all the way through. We've knew this at the point one anyway. Uh, parking at the police station has always been an issue. Uh, so if the footprint of the building is expanded in any direction, additional parking will be will need to be provided. Several interesting solutions to this problem have been presented that require further exploration. One, allow the building exterior, uh, allow the building to extend closer to Lowell Street, either by way of a variance or extending the town center business district to include the police station. Or building an additional parking space, building additional parking spaces behind the existing structure, either to the wetlands or behind the town burial ground. Both of these options have intriguing possibilities and deserve further exploration. Just like the fire station, uh, we're recommending that the select board fund a feasibility study of about $20,000 that would determine the details of this project and estimate its cost. We have a preliminary design for the police station renovation that was prepare, prepared by TBA architects in 2020 that would provide a starting point. The TBA design was based on the assumptions that the footprint of the existing structure could not be significantly increased. The purpose of the feasibility study would be to determine what can be done if that constraint is relaxed. If the study determines that the cost is reasonable, the next steps would be to speak, seek funding from the town to develop a complete design document and put the project out for bid. The only other thing that we wanted to add was that um, since the expansion of the fire station and the expansion of the police stations will both generate a need for additional parking, we think this provides an opportunity for the town. The Public Safety Facilities Task Force explored the Conant land behind Town Hall as a possible location for a new police or fire building. Although there were several problems on siting a new public safety building there, it seemed to present an opportunity to expand the parking for the entire town, town area, center area, including town hall, police station, fire station, as well as businesses in the town center. Though this was beyond the scope of the um, our charter, we believe that a parking study of the town center area would fit in nicely with the needs of the expansion of the police and fire stations. Um, there you go. Thank you. Any Thank you. questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds I'm great. Wrong, so I'm surprised with our RJ. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we should go back and take these one at a time. Um, so the fire station is first uh, in your um, description here, mm -hmm. uh, which we very much thank you for. And I know this is whittling down to two pages what you all spent hours and hours uh, discussing and researching and exploring. And uh, so uh, I, I appreciate, I know we all do, how much work went into um, coming to this set of recommendations. Um, with the fire station, um, maybe you could talk a little bit more about um, what what are the what are the needs of the fire station that would be met by having an adjacent building? Uh, well, without the other study in front of me, but and, and guys, you can all chime in. Um, we found that when they did the um, Johnson Roberts did the initial study for us of the fire station, the fire station doesn't have the pressurized zones that every fire station should have because there are a lot of toxins in the air during a fire, especially in newer construction. Um, firefighters are exposed to these. And right now that stuff just goes right back into our fire station. I mean, Brian does a great job trying to get all that stuff off in the, the garage portion, but there really should be three different zones um, of pressurized areas so they can clean off the chemicals in one and then they can um, uh, put the, well, work with, like clean up what they've used while they're, and then of course, like a an area where they can work or, or their families can wait for them if they're if they're out of uh, an emergency. So that was the biggest glaring thing to me. And then of course there's, if you've ever, space. yeah, it's just a space issue. There's no tra real training space for them. Um, part of the, uh, you know, if you go to a regular fire station where they're fully staffed, these people spend a lot of time together. And what that really is doing, it's not just making chili, it's really making a team. It's it's giving these firefighters and emergency workers a chance to really collaborate on things so that when they're in the actual work that they're doing, they know each other well and have built a trust and a relationship. 
And Brian Soros, Chief Soros has tried very hard to do that in our building, but he has no space. So um, ideally he would like to be able to say to people, come and work in this cubby all day, you know, instead of doing your work from home at home, come and do it here or come and work on something with the, that we're working on here at the fire station, which also lends us to the fact that if we have to go to a fire department that's not a volunteer fire department, we would then have the space for bunks and office space for our full-time staff to be in that building like a, a typical fire department. Anything else, guys? Um, well, uh, they don't have enough space for the equipment they have right now. And in, in fact, to put the ambulance into the space, they, re they had to take the bumper off it so that it could adequately fit in the minimal of space that's available. And if you walk around in there, it, it's really remarkable how close packed all the equipment is. Um, there, there is, there is some equipment that's parked outside because they, there's no place to put it. Um, if any new pieces of equipment are acquired and the old pieces are retained, then they'll have to be parked outside as well. So there. Two main space requirements. One is space requirement for, for equipment, and the other is space requirement for people. One other, yeah, one other thing is the bathroom is mm -hmm. filled at a time when yes. there was predominantly a male firefighting force, and now it's obviously not only co ed, but I think it's what 30% are yeah. um, female. And so they have one single bathroom with showers, and so they have a little sign that they turn depending on who's. Who's going to be using the tool? It's like the, the clean and dirty sign on your dishwasher, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other questions about the fire station? Um, I, I just wanted to say I'm still willing to pursue um, getting the land for temporary storage of things during construction if they need it. They, they, they did have some information they needed, but um, I did have somebody that was willing to work on that. Okay. Let me know. It's always good to have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have one quick question, if I may, Barney. Um, yeah. So, uh, how um, how sure are we that the septic uh, would cover this new building? Uh, if, that, that's one of the issues that needs to be addressed in the feasibility study. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought that this said that um, that one of the benefits was that the septic could still be used. Okay, so that that's something that would well, be addressed then. Benefit. I mean, all wh whether the existing well would be adequate for a larger building, whether the existing septic would be adequate, are all things that need to be examined. There is a possibility that they will be. There also is the possibility they won't. I would uh, okay venture to guess okay. that they won't because as I recall for the police station just because they put a, they didn't have more people but they put more lockers in they um that made their um septic out of uh compliance even though the lockers aren't because it's done on the basis of the number of lockers so I'm 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 going to guess even that. Even, even if the septic system has to be expanded there there are possibly some some savings yeah. to be had or taking the existing system that's in place and adding on to it. Yeah. Okay. So number six of this is really just that uh that could be a benefit. It's not definitely a benefit. Yes. Okay. Other questions on this one? Um just a general comment. So um the feasibility study. So um, I believe when when we initially talked about this, it was more in the order of twelve thousand dollars for us for the study. And um, and I see here it's twenty thousand for this one, and then twenty thousand for the police station. And is how did you arrive at that? The reasoning number? on that is because yeah. um, the gentleman who um, gave us the estimate to do the study. Um, just before we did the report to you last time, uh, is a friend of the town. And we believe that he helps us out when he can by not charging us what a typical 
um, architect might have charged, architectural firms. So I think that that number is a number that's a little bit safer, considering that we will put this out to bid because it's over $10,000, that it might not be. Mm -hmm. And we're going to rewrite the scope with Ryan. So, mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Um, so then in discussing the police station, um, I, I just a quick question from me or not, is about the, um, the uh, TBA architect study in 2020, um, which you referred to here, talks about the um, renovations that they were, that they sort of put into a preliminary design. Um, and are those renovations to the building itself that are beyond the parking and storage needs that we've been talking about? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't a preliminary design. No, that was, that was a construction document. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. So could you all hear that? They were construction documents. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, and that, I had the same question, Bernie. It's, you know, if, if we had this, I mean, I remember it was going to town hall. I mean, it was going to town meeting. Are those designs not adequate now for the police department? I, I don't think that we feel like with, um, uh, first of all, I think you'd be crazy not to relook at this with current knowledge. And I think that, uh, or we believe that um, if we take some a different approach to this by looking at the property differently, because there's a chance under the business district or the, um, uh, that we could possibly use more of the site for the building. I think we wanna be very respectful of the historic nature of that neighborhood, but um, I think we should also look creatively at that if there's a different way to look at the uh, variances for that piece of property. If you want to say something. John Matibbe also indicated he felt that that there's new building code issues that might make the TBA proposal not valid. Oh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's not sure of that, but he said you definitely have to. Oh, there are some uh -huh. issues. Uh huh. Okay. It, it's a small chance, but one possible outcome of the feasibility study is that the TBA plan is is just fine if we do some other things for parking. Mm -hmm. But all the choices should be examined carefully so we mm -hmm. can come up with the the best solution. And are you still thinking <clears throat> you when you we I think maybe this didn't get discussed when you came before us, and maybe I've just heard this since then and um, reading about the work you've been doing and your discussions. Mm -hmm. um, is is this second study around the police station still with the idea in mind that you are trying to make it a usable um, facility for at least the next 10 years. And this is not with the idea that it would be something that might be useful to the, might be uh, useful to the town for say 30 years. Are you thinking this is, this has an end life? <laughs> no, I know. I think this is a long-term, I mean, with the new possibilities, I think what's a potentially long-term solution. If we can address the parking issue and find the parking in town, yeah, and we can in fact expand the building out a little bit, which we could do if we can get the building district or variance. It's a long-term solution; it's a permanent solution, as long as any solution is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's a little change in your thinking, I think, right? From I mean, yeah. John Fisher before he left said the TBA proposal is not going to be long-term if you can't address the parking and other issues. But now some new solutions have come for the parking. I mean, the parking looks like a solvable problem if we want to do uh -huh. some things, and uh -huh. that's a huge. Change. And I see a reference in here to um, the town uh, semi town burying ground. Yeah. So um, is that the so you you say either into the wetlands or behind the town burying ground? Can you talk about that a little bit more? Sure. It was after we presented to the to you the select board. Um, I the select uh, board suggested that we look behind town hall. Right. And so we did, um, Barney, you were able to attend with a lot, a lot of other people. Um, Ryan um, came, you know, showed us where everything was and walked us around. And even most people in this room probably went on that walk with us. And so I think at that point, we learned that there are other things that are needed in, in this area of the town, meaning for town hall and things like that, and that the parking was inadequate and there might be storage issues. And so I think what we're really saying is, is we shouldn't look at these two buildings in a silo at all. And that perhaps there should be a study on that the back area of, of town hall and how it connects to uh, fire and police. And then 
I know the uh, the uh, uh, COA and human services came in and asked for their needs. And so, you know, it's out of our purview, but it seems like a good time to sort of get all these ideas on the table and then maybe over a few years parse out how these these needs can be met in a plan that's done with the whole area between these buildings back here. And and part of that is the parking that, you know, I, I know that the police don't really want their parking away from their building, but uh, their high points are when shifts change over, then they have kind of twice the staff because then, you know, they, they're Nursing. both there at the same time. And I think that happens three times a day. And the middle of the day one is the really tough one. So there may be a way if parking was up at town behind town hall for the police that that they could work through that shift in stuff, but it would mean that they could park there. Um, and maybe possibly a storage unit there as well with cameras that could be seen. Uh, although we might not need it if we can change the building, right? Yeah. So um, so yeah, I we, I, I, I we were very excited about, some of us are very excited about the prospect of looking at that whole area. Other questions? Yeah, so I just want to make sure that <clears throat> that I'm understanding. So what you were just talking about was that the last thing in the in this um, recommendation, which was the further recommendations, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's just a hey, you should do this. Does the study depend upon that? Uh, no, no, no. No. Okay. Except the parking might. Yeah. Well, the parking, the police station to be used as a long term solution requires a parking right. solution. Right. Yeah. So in, in, in essence, yes. I think. Do you follow that? Um, yeah. Well, it seems to me like in this proposal, uh, you know, it's where, you know, we have the TBA, but we're asking somebody to look at it because there's a relaxed, uh, you know, relax, relax requirements because the footprint of the building may be able to grow because the parking has been resolved. Um, what do we do if we do the study and behind the burial grounds doesn't work and going over the wetlands doesn't work, um, but our new study is a larger building? Have we done a really a third study on the police station and we still can't do anything that's just what i'm concerned about is there is there a way we could do this where we know at the end of this that you know i'm supportive of the study as long as at the end of the study we know that we will have something that we know would be actionable mm -hmm. even if these other you know things that are out there like parking over wetlands or parking behind the cemetery don't work out otherwise we've just kind of done a third study right nathan i think um one of the requirements of the study is to include parking because that's one of the main drivers why the tba report was so tight if you will and may not have worked well so this study will have to require that parking is addressed when they do the look at the building and the expansion of the building is it okay parking done? so that the, the the parking is completely integrated into this study it's not a study of an expanded footprint of the building right yes for the police station. It, it's all okay i just i missed i thought that you know parking was going to be done differently than the study for the building but, but yep. the the overall look looking at parking in the town center as a whole <clears> is something that could be done in a phased way um the, the immediate need is to solve the parking issue for the police um, at the fire station. Um, if if the building expands on the footprint there, that will take up some of their parking space. But they have some areas that they can expand parking um, area that isn't paved now that could become parking. Um, well, that okay. Be addressed in the study that, would, yes. that, that concerns the fire department parking. But they're also as well. But, but looking at the parking situation at town hall as well, mm -hmm. it became very um, enticing to to try and solve the problem as a whole problem. So providing parking for the police station, for the fire station, for town hall, for the town center area as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, 
that doesn't mean that we need to do it all at the same time, but having a plan on how to make that happen, I think would would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. just, to give you a okay, sense, okay. just to give you a sense of how this thinking, and this is why we added this little, we'd also recommend, um, think about when you come to vote at town hall. It's it's a wonder that there are not more dinged cars when you come, to, come up to vote, it's so busy. A study could possibly address that issue, help the police and and move the flow of traffic better back here. So I, th I think that we were excited about the problem that this may solve if we looked at this in a bigger scale. But just to be, just to make sure that I'm understanding, is this study tackling that parking? Or is this study just looking at the police department needs and the fire department needs? So the police study would address the parking of the police, the fire, okay. the, the, the parking of the fire, and a broader thing, that's a separate deal. Okay, so the further recommendations is a different study. Yes. Okay, and so just so I'm thinking about it, you know, correctly. Well, first of all, how many parking spaces are we short at the police station? Uh, I mean, it's in the vicinity of a dozen, 10, it's not, it's not 100, it's, it's a 10, 12, you know, what, you know it depends on the expansion built of the building itself, Nathan. Well, when you lose, you have to replace. When, when you do the expansion, if we do an expansion and build on the existing one, mm -hmm. depending on how many parking spaces get taken up, up and you're already there. Right. But okay, so it's going to be a balance of the size of the building to the number of parking spaces. There's there's currently, this is Mike's say, I'll say nice. So you have to you come up, Mike, so you can be heard. Yeah, please. Thank you. Mike Saylor, 319 Unit 11, Stern Street. Uh, currently, they squeeze 14 cars into the police station. So the plans say that there are 12. Um, and 14 is not enough based on the analysis of dual shifts and other things. Uh, how much more? is debatable but you know you i would personally say that you need you know another five to ten just for the police for the medium term i don't know about long term that's why you would have a study and professionals that would know how to uh do that yeah thanks and the the number of cars okay. you're talking about are these are both um both the police vehicles and the officers personal vehicles yeah. Yeah. Total of somewhere but to, around 14 right now are what go in there. Yeah. yeah. And as I recall, the, in the TBA plans that we had last, um, we had planned training area that they don't have now where they wanted to do classes and things like that. So you could uh, think about another few cars coming in that there for training. Nathan, did you have another question or comment? Yeah, that's no, what I mean. Basically, I think the answer to my question there is the study would tell us how many parking spaces we needed, and then they would look to see where they could where they could fit those spaces. Right? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and then when we're talking about that further, right? This is my last question. I promise. Um, I guess I can't yeah. promise that. But um, it, when we're looking at the further recommendations, there are are you are you thinking it's just an expansion of where the current town hall parking is that that's just made bigger, or is it somewhere else on Conant Land? Yes and yes. <laughs> I don't know if they can see. Okay, it's not to be limited, right? You right, right. I, but the the what's been explored, my understanding is, it's been the area primarily from the town hall parking lot going down toward right. and it's been explored by lay people yeah with a great idea not with any sense of study so okay and that's not a part of this anyway right this right. isn't I mean, a part of what we're saying and that's what we're saying is this would be a great study too and i don't know if you can combine all three if you choose to do the third study combine them with one organization uh, I, I think that's, that's i mean that's exactly what you know springs in my mind is yeah. Because there's another element we have in it. You you alluded to it, which is the COAHS, right. which has raised its hand and said, "Well, what about us?" Right. So, and and Ryan has his own ideas about the constraints of this building. So, to me, if you look at the needs on one side, so fire, police, 
aging and parking, which connects all of those. And then on the other side, you look at the constraints. So there are the zoning constraints, there's the footprint that footprints that exist, there's the wetlands, there's town owned land and whether we can use some of it. Um, you know, a, a bound picture begins to emerge, not the solution, but the yeah. boundaries, right? And then the opportunity though, which is really exciting to me, is to finally have the, the opportunity to draw the, to create a town campus and really draw the center together in a way that's never been done, mm -hmm. which again, ideally from just a vision, you know, if you could manage it, you have better parking. I mean, as we agree, this parking lot is ridiculous out here, right? Better use of space, more connected through pathways or whatever, sure. and safer, certainly, and allowing uh, the, the constituents of the COA, which, by the way, is the largest growing segment in town, right? Some of us know that um, every day, uh, to park, do their activities, go to Ferns, have a go to the library. You know, I mean, there's certain things where we've talked, we, 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 we sort of design things so people can walk, but nobody walks, right? Because there's really not a good way to do it. So I personally would be very much in favor of, and I don't know what, you got two experts. Well, you don't yet have a police expert, but there'll be a police station expert and we have a fire station expert, but we need like a urban, that's not even urban, but a planner, planner. a town planner, but not our, I mean, professional and and i'd be very interested in what that looks like as and and to your point can you is that on top of little studies that go or is it one big thing i mean i don't know anything I don't, yeah. well i think um the master plan and the housing plan both um recommended a, a study of the town center visioning study um with charrettes again not you know to, yeah, to help that. people to to think through some of these. John Thanks. Valentine is here. Hey, John. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. So um, if we, so these, um, the idea would be we would put uh, a warrant article on at the, at, for town meeting this spring about funding. Uh, ID, well, our options are one study that looks at police and fire, but from the conversation we're having, we're talking about a larger, a, potentially a study that encompasses um, the whole area as as David's describing it. And therefore we, we would be, I mean, we'd have to figure out, are we asking for one study that would be a larger amount than the 40,000 that's in your current recommendation? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we have, Kind of estimates for feasibility studies for police and for fire, but I mean we haven't looked at the whole town center. I mean, do we have any? Do you have any idea, Ryan? For example, what that would cost? Well, I've been following a lot of these discussions, so uh, and working with Julie to understand the area and better understand the needs. So the um, in the procurement we're doing for our for our design services, also understanding that. There's a ton of disciplines that are needed here. Yeah. So it's civil engineering, it's architect, and then it's it's combining them all with, with specialties. So ideally you would have, if you're going to do it all, a study that then they could sub out some of the other design qualities and then get whatever answer you want based on your scope of work. Or you could hand pick each part that you wanna that you wanna do. But they're gonna talk anyway. So the downside of a combined uh, is they're going to add a little premium for subbing out the work, so oh, right. you could probably double the costs, at least maybe triple that you that you've mentioned. So somewhere in the vicinity of forty, which you're identifying to about one hundred and twenty, is, is my educated guess. Um, I think with some leverage, a hundred hundred would get it done. The considering it as a percent of the project cost, so the. The combined, well, I don't, I don't think you guys really priced it, but there's a lot of collective knowledge across from us here. So in your minds, very rough, if just se se segregating now again, parking and all that other stuff, just the two buildings, the annex and assuming expansion and revamp of the police, is this like 
20 million? Do you I'm guys... going to go like this. I don't know, gang. We yeah, haven't, any... we didn't know this question was coming. We need to have some information. Brian Sauer's proposal is 9,000 9, uh, right. feet. Okay. The best number right now is $1,000 per square foot. So it's 9 million bucks. It's 9 million dollars. Okay, so it's 10. It's 9 million dollars, but it shouldn't be 20. I mean, if it's 20. Well, 20 for the two, maybe. I mean, you get for the two. At least I asked my no. Okay, well. 20 for the <laughs> Well, nine yeah, and fire. yeah, fire. fire, ten, just fire alone. Okay, so well, the reason I'm asking more, I mean, for two reasons, I guess. One is, you know, you say, well, gee, a hundred thousand for a study. Wow, that's a lot of money for a study. But I'll just use twenty as a placeholder for everything. That's twenty million. Twenty million, nine, ten million for the fire, and five million for the police, and something that COA is another little building, and everything citing all that you know and the order of 20 which certainly way less than the, what i understood public a single standalone public safety building including acquiring land would be in the 30s i would no, guess it would be like 28 million plus, plus land right okay so 20 million one percent of 20 million is still two hundred thousand dollars so for half a percent of the end construction you can get a vision i just want to calibrate the idea that wow a six-figure study of a study that seems like a ton of money but it's prudent in my mind because we, we are talking double digit millions no matter what we do so you know less than one percent of the total cost to spend up front to get a good sense of all the constraints to me sounds like you know a good deal the other thing that i would point out is that in the 2028 time frame i think the school building projects debt load starts to go down so if this thing we would we would initiate a study we would propose a study for town meeting this year that i presume runs roughly the year till the next town meeting right so that's till town meeting of 2024 at which time you were suggesting i think detailed drawings and and bidding right and so that means you start construction in 25 26 yeah so you be okay so you begin to get close to that 2028 20, where you could ban a couple years and then your debt load starts to come down as this kicks in so i mean it's it is a window i think to borrow brow and yeah. so the, the costs are also higher you know because of that that new timeline right so you know, just a quick question is you know with this larger town center study would that be a study around parking and connectivity within the center of town or would that be saying hey maybe the fire department doesn't go there and maybe the police department uh, you know doesn't stay there and the police doesn't stay there you know is this study going to change mm -mm. No. all the thoughts about the buildings and if they're not then why don't we move forward with the studies for these two buildings um, to get them going, and then the connectivity and parking and everything is all a different study. If it's not going to impact the two buildings, well, it, oh, but it will. But it, but but it, it does. It might, as far as parking goes. Yeah, the yeah. police station parking. It's right, because if the... if you can't uh, can't use some of those parking spots that which are currently on the police uh, land in order to expand into, yeah, yeah. So I think the parking has to cannot be uh, cut off. I don't think it's like an arm that can be just severed and. No, I also uh, take think, him to the other doctor. <laughs> I also think the town really should really stop moving on the fire department yeah. issue because that's the thing that I think has the most impact to the town in the future. If all of a sudden we can't get our volunteers or our call people to to maintain the, the staff. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. going to be a huge impact to the town if we have to go full time or some some variation of full time. Mm -hmm. And they're very crowded over there. I mean, we can, I, th I personally think we can live a little bit with the police station for a while, but the fire department needs something soon. Yeah, I think we all would concur with that. And, and that's more separatable with regard to parking and access, I guess. I would think so too, because it's kind yes. of farther away. The yeah. parking issue is really town. So, but, but do, isn't it true that any, any, again, the timeline, even if you do one project, say you do the fire department only right now, still get funds authorized at this town meeting and get the construction plan authorized in 2024 so that's a year no matter what so one could i think ask for more money for a bigger study which is separatable right you're not going to delay because it's still a year by the t 
time you get done and ask for funds and you can tee up the fire station as the first one in a staged build i presume right yeah we, and, we didn't go into this in this in depth right, right. in our meetings because it's not our purview but. but you're not as constrained on the on the fire you you know in other words you can you can probably figure out the the parking on site but the yeah. police it's a tough one. It's there is it's hemmed in pretty darn good. Yeah. And well, I think we should move forward with the, the the fire one and you know take a look at a you know look at everything else we're talking about. But it just seems to me like you know it's not the purview you know as they've been saying of this team. And so you know would we really be able to get the cost together for a study in time for this town meeting if we kept them all together? Oh. The, only, the only thing I would say is we can't lose momentum on the police station yeah. because the police station does not meet code right now for a police station. Yeah. So um, there are a number of, of issues with the building that really need to be addressed. So my concern is if we just run down the road with fire, then then police is just going to be put on the back burner again. And I just we just can't recommend that. And mm -hmm. I would just say, Nathan, that. Um, my concern about doing them, you know, in piecemeal or even just doing a study of the fire department and then the police station, rather than spending the additional money to have an overall uh, scope and and plan that we've actually costed out, um, I think could end up with us spending additional money to do more studying when if we if we um do the whole take a look at the whole project um then we we won't we don't run the risk of doing work here on the fire station and then the police station and then we go oh whoops if we had thought about what we might want to do with the space in between we would have made a different choice on what we did on the police station or what we're doing with the fire station and um you know i i would rather have the overall concept have that done by a you know a reputable firm and we take the town through the process of you know weighing in on that and understanding the the options and then we we get a study back you know next spring and can move ahead from there yeah, the only thing I worry about is, you know, so I'm I'm totally supportive of what was presented to us tonight. Um, the only thing I worry about is if we kind of last minute make it a bigger study, we may not get the support of town for that kind of change to the Conant land into the, the town center, and we may end up with nothing. And so it's just it, it's just adding adding risk. I, you know, I think I think the town would vote for the studies we were just talking about. Um, if if all of a sudden we go to this town meeting with this larger we're going to study that the center of carlisle and the parking and the pathways and the use of conant land for that i just worry that we may end up with nothing i think um, though that i think though i'm sorry if if we if we end up we're going to have to look at that space for parking for the police station anyway right the, the parking is going to have to be addressed and our, I, I think our recommendation is to go back towards town hall, partially because there's no other place. Um, and because it would then possibly trip a solution for other areas in that part of the, the center of town. So you kind of can't peel them apart in some ways because we, we are going to have to have parking addressed on some level. Okay, so that gets back to that twenty thousand dollar does include the going back into Conant land and not just the wetland and behind the the cemetery. I think that would the study would tell us what was right there. Behind the burial ground. Also. Yeah. Right. So is it right. or what would it take? I'm just thinking about town meeting because Nathan, I think you're raising a really good question about you know how will people feel about authorizing hundred thousand dollars for a study of something that you know has been talked about and studied before or at least parts of it um is it possible to get a i don't and i don't know the terminology this is not my area of expertise but a some kind of a 
concept that's a visual concept of what we're talking about so that uh, town meeting people, and, and in advance of that, we would obviously try to get it socialized and get the get some of that information out so that people could see uh, what uh, what the idea is. What's the reason for having money to to that that amount of money to do a larger study? What what are we potentially considering um, in a in a visual way? Before the, before that question is answered, Barney, because he keeps yeah. putting his hand up, I can see that I'm the only person on the TV, and John Ballantyne would like to speak. He's had his he's been oh, trying right. to okay. talk for a while. All right, thanks, Nathan. Let me just, yeah. I, Ryan, is there a do you have an answer to my question? Is that something we or maybe someone else in the room knows that 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 skill exists well, out there? Sure, yes. Uh, well, no, a charrette is where you bring people from the community yeah. and everyone has an input. I think that will take on a life of its own and get right. west too far afield of yeah. where we want to be. You could get a site planner to come in and do several schematics of showing these different things. But as as someone actually, Nathan, you raised you know questions about you know the septic or the well and those things, and and as you factor those into this plan, you may have a better handle of where things can be laid out and, so, mm -hmm. and such. A site planner can do that, and I think it's not you know a big endeavor. I mean, I I would think I, I don't know I. I'm I'm kind of listening to what you're saying, Nathan, and I I think you know we're trying to balance you know our needs as a town, and we need a new fire, or we need you know something new to support the fire department, and we need something new to support the police department, and we've been charged with that for a while, and we've got to kind of move with this, and and so I you know I like that idea. I'd love to you know sit in another year just say okay well we're going to come up with all these different concepts and everything but we do have to kind of the rubber's going to meet the road here about getting certain things done and so and i'm not saying i have the answer to that or and what but i think that we have to keep that in mind and i'm glad you brought that up nathan because i think it's important well, but, john, uh, we, uh, go ahead jerry and then uh, i'm going to call on you john <laughs> yeah we, we we know we have a definite need we at the very least, we need to do something at the fire station, and we need to do something at the at the police station. Um, it's tempting to to put those together and look at the total needs of of the town center, but I I think it would be horrible if by doing that we lost the ability to proceed on the fire station and the mm -hmm. police station. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John. Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate uh, the statements that a lot of you have made, particularly my fellow master planning people, which is basically we've been talking about both a longer term facilities plan and a longer term financial plan. And clearly public safety is kind of priority one. But as David mentioned, it's a phased process and presenting that to the town is this is what we're going to be doing over the next five or 10 years, I think is really important. As you know, we've often been in our silos doing one project at a time and then we find out oh gee we didn't think of that and whatever but i think what the this committee has done a terrific job of is coming up looking at these needs and coming up with practical solutions within the financial constraints that are clearly facing us and we can debate what those financial constraints are but they're clearly in the 20 million range not in the 30 40 million range and how to do that in a way that makes sense and you lay it out and i think that's really important that you lay that out to town meeting and saying here's what we've done and i know ryan's been working on this and looking at this in detail and obviously the finance committee so you say here's the first phase here's the second phase and here's how it's going to affect taxes and everything else and i think that's and meet our facility needs and all of them and i think that's we're, we're getting there. It's a long process. And I think there are times that people get a little frustrated about how long it takes. Um, and but I think we're finally there. <laughs> we're getting there. And I really applaud everybody for finally, you know, saying, OK, here's a good practical solution. Let's see if it's going to work. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're you know, we're not here tonight to try to, um, you know, make a decision. I mean, we wanted to have a good back and forth conversation. We still have a little more time. Uh, well, I certainly yeah. support getting studies, the two studies that were recommended in here. I'm wondering if we shouldn't give a little more money and be crystal clear that those studies will address parking on all of them, just to make sure that 
parking and circulation. Um, I mean, we, we, we certainly can add that to the scope of work that we ask for in the yeah, studies but that they, they may, might add to the cost. That's, that's what I'm saying. I would, I'm, I would support adding to the cost in order to be sure that that is in the scope. The, um, but I also want to, I agree with that. I think that we can provide the planners, whoever is engaged with constraints that are in, you know, that, and, and constraints and lack of constraints. So I don't know that it's necessary to offer up Conant land. I don't, I don't know that that's the solution. That's an area of available. Some parts of it are available, but we know we have town, I mean, town hall owned land right over here that's inefficiently used. And the, the re, is it Conant? Yes, town yeah. hall is sitting on Conant land. Well, well, let me rephrase it then. The, the built part of Conant land, right? They're not going to unbuild it, right? Is anybody saying we're going to unbuild? No. So we've got already stuff that's inefficiently used. So that's not, you know, making it more efficient. It costs money, but it's not changing the, it's not eating into, say, I mean, that's one of the factors that a planner should consider. So I just want to be clear if we go with this idea of the two projects with parking as a consideration, what ground rules would they be provided? Like what would they look at and what wouldn't they look at? Do you all see yourselves as a committee providing the scope um, requirements or, re or criteria? Somebody you know? has to. Okay. Yeah. Well, the good news is, is that Ryan's a procurement guy. Uh, so we've already scheduled him to meet with us in two weeks to talk about writing up the scope. And then, right. is that what your question is? Oh, go ahead. And a question also is, is that somewhere along the line, I guess the charter, if you will, of our committee is not to do that. Our charter was to make recommendations to you guys. So right. it's time to either create a new committee or change our charter or find out if the members want to still stay and do the additional work because it's we're kind of going off now it's yeah scope creep big time <laughs> no but i mean we just need to bill it's free labor why wouldn't we scope creep it <laughs> no we just need to tell ryan what's in jack the yeah because our recommendations so that that was what i was seeing as our responsibility the final final deliverable yeah that's right deliverable. um Mike, you had your hand up a while back. Did you want to offer a comment at this point or? I'll try not to go. Uh, Mike Saylor again, 319 Stern Street. I'll try not to go into details because I do. Um, Barney, you asked about are there visualizations? Yes, there are. Um, the committee has seen them. In terms of the parking uh, for the police station, and visualization again of the uh, police station parking. The two likely spots, which was mentioned in their report, are right behind the burial ground or going straight down the police station through the wetlands up towards town hall. So just focusing on the police station needs, you could pick either one of those. But then if you went and said, oh, but what would we do for town hall? you might pick one or the other of them. Right. So that's where going to that third recommendation might make some sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't go into any of the details, but there is uplands places in the wetland, uh, or not in the wetland, <laughs> the upland, which is not wet, still within the buffer zone. So a lot of conservation restrictions, a lot of engineering, about what could you do or not. Um, and so I'll just leave it at that, that that's sort of why that third one comes in there. Right. It's to be, right. So yeah. we have a, a a larger understanding of of the possibilities in that area. Yeah. And right, we make the decision about there. the police because informed it, by that larger picture. One yeah. other comment relative to Excellent. Nathan's risk. The fire station is clearly a priority. One could have two warrant articles because uh, the fire station really doesn't need the parking. 
fire station 20, you know, for 20 case study absolutely has to be done. Combine the police and all the other needs into the big study, which you know does, it could delay a year if you needed to, if, you, if, you, if it doesn't work. And then you can so make that one study, which includes parking. Because police need, if you don't solve the park problem with police, you don't solve the problem long term. You, you have a short term solution. So mm -hmm. right. Separate the fire station. Yeah. Add to that, Brian. Yes, Ryan. So just thinking along the same lines, this study isn't going to be done, nor likely is there a recommendation until next town meeting. So you're looking at either mm -hmm. study not being decided on until 2024. Well, wait, so, when you say that, you mean uh, that we wouldn't have chosen somebody and have the study completed? The study right? would be complete. The decision on what to do about the study. Yeah, wouldn't be happen until... Right. So you have flexibility in ARPA funds. If you wanted to secure funding for the for the fire station study and then go to town meeting with the idea that you'd combine the two if everyone supported it, but the backup of having just the fire department before you rethought it. Okay. Or you could do two Warren articles so that the, the source is clear. I think that shows the public transparency and, and then buy-in for, for the eventual decision. Mm -hmm. But advocating for the staff, the fire department and the police department are both priorities. Uh, I do agree the fire department is a larger priority and using ARPA funds for that study to get space and others is you know, what, it, what it's for. So if we were to um, request ARPA funds, then that doesn't go to town meeting. It doesn't, but you could connect it in a presentation or a discussion. About yeah, the warrant article. where there was a warrant article for a study for the police station and the sort of larger yeah. concept of uh, parking and town hall needs. Yeah. Okay. And I just, you know, we were just speaking about the timeline, you know, I think, I think that we need to do this with a lot of urgency because this is just a feasibility study, right? This is not, we're not going to have design docs at the end of this, right? Right. And so, if we go to town meeting now and we get the money for the, the, we get these funds and we say, you know, it's just for the police and the fire, or we say it's for the bigger project, we then need to go to town meeting, you know, next spring and ask for the, the money to get the design docs. Right. And then you ne we need to go to town meeting again to get the money for the, you know, so we're talking three years away and we've done nothing to solve the fire and police. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to, we need to eliminate as much risk as we can in 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 something happening to make this not work out. Mm -hmm. Could all of the feasibility studies, if if we were looked at the whole thing, the hundred thousand dollars, could that all be ARPA? So why don't we just do that? <laughs> well, that's another discussion about ARPA. If we're, if we're here, you know, were you here when Scott? Um, we, we have to we have to think about that. But the other, you know, question I was just talking to you, um, we, you know. What would happen if, well, I don't know. You you phrase it. I've I've kind of he's lost. He's asking, could we could the study the feasibility study be done by the fall in time for a fall town meeting? My gut reaction was no, but if you think so, that, I mean, if you just took the fire station. Well, I don't know which one, but just to move it along as right. My yeah. my opinion is there wouldn't. Yes, but the decision on what to do would take longer debate right then you could get ready you right. could Did you get to socialize it so yeah if you just completely agreed with the study and everyone was on the same yeah, page right. yeah fall but you need that time to discuss it and decide what you're going to do well, we've I, also said that we didn't want to do projects like this that you know would were expenses in the fall meetings right that's what we've right i need to try to keep it within the fiscal year and if we're saying that the fire department is the priority, I'm a little nervous because I had come into this thinking both were priorities. And I think if you start to to indicate that to you know the public, if that and, and whatever it is, it is, and we want to tell the truth about it. But it's you know if if they're equally as important, I think we need to portray that and and say these are you know need to be done now because I think if you give people a choice, they'll say, oh, well, what do I have to do? Oh, well, just the fire department. And then, you know, you could you could lose your your political will to do the police station. Then we could really be in a worse situation. Well, well I, I, I think it's hard to to make a distinction of, of about which is higher priority, police or fire. Yeah. I mean, the police station has has issues. Um, it doesn't meet the standards for a police station for a town our size. Um, there is some potential liability the town has for 
for not providing um, an adequate facility right. to deal with the needs of the police department. Um, not there, there is the issue of, of the safety of, of the police staff as they bring people in and out of the station. The way it's happening right now is 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 marginal at best. Yeah. And I, I remember when we were working on the plans, mm -hmm. it was the highest priority. You know, um, we didn't even talk about the fire station. So I kind of I'm sitting here wondering, gee, when did it lose so much priority? Um, yeah. I should restate from the, st the staff perspective, the police department is much more complex because of the lack of space and its reliance on the land around it. So they are of equal priority to staff. It's just the fire department is more solvable because it doesn't rely on more space. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I like what you said, Travis, that we, we don't want to forget how important they both are. Yeah, and leading with one may diminish the importance of the other. Right, and so I mean that that's a political issue that Nathan's also flagged, and we've been there many times where if you overreach, you off you sometimes get none. I mean, I don't know if Jerry, you were in Bingcom back in the day when we thought that turf fields would be great, and we lost. We had we ended up with no fields because people thought we overreached. Right, wrote at the high school five years. Yeah, ago. right. So I think. But from, I want to go back to what I said, a f one half of 1% insurance policy to make sure that you're doing the right thing is, is cheap money. Now it is political in a lot of ways. One of which is if you cross that magic six figure, people wake up. And another one is that some people have heard this before say, well, gee, it's a slippery slope. Once you authorize that, you're kind of already predetermining the outcome that you're going to go do the project. So people who may just generally not support big spend, big ticket items might not want to even start down that road. Um, I don't know politically if we just unilaterally, well, obviously the ARPA committee would have to agree, but if we simply bypass that whole process and spent that money on ARPA, just saying we're going to do this because we think it's important and then we want to present you with a full set of facts a year from now. I don't know if people would say, well, you're really backdooring it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But but I'm I'm I remain strongly in favor, however we parse it to articles, whatever, of spending that small money up front to get the complete picture. We're so close and we know the constraints. And again, uh, COAHS has not come up too much in tonight's conversation, but I know John's thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. You know, if we're going to do something that this is the chance because we're not going to build another building for a long time after this set of buildings. And that's the truth. And, you know, community center, I mean, you could even say that giving this sort of space that um, Joan articulated a few meetings ago is, is a community, is a sort of community center. It's not the big, you know, gym with pool and all that but it's it's a place where people can gather which is a thing that's sorely lacking also so now it again doesn't mean we have to spend that money now you can parcel those out but the one half of one percent roadmap and you already have two you know half of it right i mean you have two pieces that are to what ryan said are are subcontractable Stu Roberts would certainly get his piece that he's good at and he knows. And you'd have to find the Stu Roberts of police. So I I recognize the political issue and I certainly don't want to come up empty handed out of town meeting because we screwed it up. But boy, we can easily screw it up by balkanizing the thing and not recognizing the whole. I guess I, I guess I still worry though, David, that you know, I completely understand where you're coming from, but if we're adding, if we're doing a study of town center as it is in the master plan of, you know, the, the use of town center, that's, that's a massive project. And that's, that's where we started on this of, oh, should we do that? Um, you know, it, it, it just seems to me like a major increase into what this is looking at. And I don't see how it happens quite that fast because we really need to involve a lot of input from town citizens. 
I, I agree with that, but looking at it doesn't necessarily mean we're doing it, but you'll never do it if you don't look at it. You have to me, you know, we're but you don't of, want to do the plan unless you're getting the input from people, right? We don't want to just say, oh, go, have, go and do this plan. Well, I think that we'll have to have a component of, of public shredding in it. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I don't want to be the seven blind men and the elephant where, you know, we each have a piece of it and we don't have the whole picture. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I, yeah I guess I, I guess I just think this is, you know, has been such a priority for so long. Is there a way we could just, you know, ask the people doing the study for these two buildings, you know, you know, give us, you know, give us a solution. If there is, if there is a lot more parking, give us a solution. If there isn't a lot more parking, um, I mean, there's, there's got to be a way we can do it without doing the complete study of, of town center. It also seems to me like that complete center would be a lot more than one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I think you could do a study that is just the parking for the police station, and you know, it just includes the police station saying, "How can we solve this issue?" and really think about that as part of that study without getting into a massive study. I worry about the project creep, and I also worry that we don't we we could study this, and it's always great. We love. I mean, we could. You know, because there's always other possibilities, but we are at a point, I think, where we need to start to, we've, we, it's like a funnel, and we started with, oh, we're going to look at other lands and look at other things, and we've kind of funneled down, and we've said, okay, we're going to come up with a better idea for the fire station, rather than building a whole new one, we're going to add to this, we're, we're kind of zeroing in, and I think we're, I, we're risking going out and i know there's an argument to be made that you should go out now because you only get one chance at this and we want to do it right but you know we have certain things that we need to get done too so i don't know i'm falling a little bit more on the camp of let's get this but the, the impact on well i guess the crux of it is can you do a credible study and it's going to take a year to do a study and come back to town meeting right we all agree whatever we commission whatever we pitch or ARPA fund for this town meeting, the real spend is presented in spring of 24. I would think a feasibility study by a firm could be done in- I like, would think so. Within three months. Well, you said three months, but then you push but back then, at 12 months. I mean, I'm saying in 12, it's a concerted effort to get this thing done, again, as a package. And it doesn't mean, it. you can always decide at the end of that study, we're gonna go, fire and then we're going to go police and then down the road we're going to do something i mean you can decide to stage it once you have the facts but to go without the facts we're going to spend 20 million dollars like shouldn't we have a plan well i i don't know if this is my place to talk but i'm going to um so <laughs> so this is a feasibility study right? and, and you know i love your analogy about the funnel right we're getting closer you start with a master planning committee and you talk about what's the master plan. They said, we need a center of town. Then you got another committee that says, we need more parking for our, our, our COA people. You have us come in and say, well, we're gonna need more parking for the police station. We're probably gonna try to go up behind the, behind the, the, the town hall. It seems to me like this funnel is telling you something really clearly, is that we need, we need to start working our way towards our goals. And we've just established that this is part of your goal. This is all of us. Yeah. And, and so it seems to me silly that we would take this clear knowledge and go, let's wait. In, in terms of the timeline, if there is a sense of urgency, would it not be possible to do, you know, fund the design study, a uh, feasibility study now? Suppose that says, yes, it's feasible. Could one not in a fall town meeting authorize the expenditure for the design documents, not the project, you know, because that's a lot less than $10 million or whatever it is. And then next spring actually authorize the project, so at least. I think that's reasonable. Twenty four. I think well, they try not to do. But we've, yeah, we the we've tried yeah. as a policy, you know, that um, not to bring a large financial decision to a fall town meeting. That ideally it I, happened in the spring, along with the other financial decisions. But um, it's not that we have done that upon occasion. We have broken that. Uh, John, I saw you had your hand up a while back, but and Nathan, if you have a comment, we can do that afterwards. And then I um, I do think we need to move on so because we have a big discussion about the budget coming up. 
So, John, yeah, please um, introduce yourself and share your thoughts. So, John Lee, 65 Lowell Street, longtime resident. I think while we're discussing the elephant and running our fingers around the funnel, it's very <laughs> important as, as we get to having serious professional uh, input that we recognize that there are some major wetlands issues and the role of the historic history of the town that need to get um, serious uh, consideration because they're both major players in any de decision that we make and they shouldn't be glossed over lightly. Okay. Yeah, thank you, John. Okay, and um, Nathan, yeah, you had a comment or something? Yeah, else? yeah, so I think, I guess just kind of in line with um, what was just talked about as far as the timing, you know, if if we're talking about these these two studies that were presented tonight and the solution for the parking that was presented tonight, we could always bring that to town meeting this spring and potentially use ARPA funds for the, the design and be ready for town meeting next spring for the larger, this is how much it's gonna cost for construction. That's good. How does that fit? Well, let's. Um, we've of course, we're not the ones that you know. We're ultimately the ones that decide about ARPA, but we're not the ones yes. that process yes. it and everything. And so, right. you know, it's not. It's, you know, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but. Okay, we've gotten a lot of I think really good discussion um, and information out here, and I um, we will be we'll have to make a decision about this in the not too distant future. You know, our um, we're having the joint meeting with the FinCom at the end of this month. We close the warrant at the end of the month and we can put a placeholder on for, you know, these items. Um, and then in March, we'll have to decide uh, how we want to handle this um, going forward. So that's good. We're on our way. And thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, for your work and for your presentation tonight. Thank you. Don't forget to end your meeting. Huh? Oh, yeah, you have to close your meeting. Oh, yeah. Oh, we adjourn. Um, closing the um, Municipal Facilities Task Force meeting at 8.39. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I would suggest the select board stand up and stretch thank you. That's because we've got a lot of thinking we got to do for this uh, next agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. What can I find? I'm just made it. 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 I'm just the 22nd and or 20 middle of the first of March. Are we going to be that far into March? Are we going to be talking about this or is that? Well, our meeting is at the 14th and the 28th in March. In March 28th or is that yeah, No, um, March. Also March. Oh, March. Yeah. Yeah, I will be away on the 28th. Okay. But I may I may be able to remote in. I don't know yeah. my ability then. Okay. But I just. I'm, I'm well, just pointing you to that one. I'm just yeah, as we're discussing, yeah, yeah, we're figuring out the agenda. And um, are you still thinking that there may be um, police? No, we'll be done by that mid March for that March 14th. Oh yeah, the, the no, no, the yeah before, the, yeah March 14th. Yeah, yes, yes okay. we will have that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> Somebody remind me the the date of the town meeting. Uh, May eighth. Is that yeah? May ninth. May ninth. Yeah. Okay. No, it's May eighth. Is it eight? Yep. Monday, right? It's Monday night. Yeah. Yeah. Parallel town meeting. Yeah. Yep. March twentieth, I think, is the the caucus. caucus. Yeah. Put that in my calendar. Okay. Yeah. Monday night. Uh, oh. March. Yeah. March. Okay. I guess I'll be in March. We will have a huh. great. We we'll have it on this. One. Great. Okay. So let's see. David, please. Uh, you're coming back shortly. Let's move on to the um, budget discussion, uh, which we have planned for um, 
45 minutes. And so place cleared out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are you, we are going to spend all the money. I know. We, it's, it's that, yeah. hundred thousand that everybody yeah. has all been out of shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. been out of shape. Being careful. Right. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna, Ryan. I'm gonna ask you to give us um maybe a, a summary or of the documents yeah. that you've included in the packet. Um. I think do you want to start with the item on uh, page, page 18 of the packet, which is the revenue notes, the expenses, deficit analysis, levy analysis, uh, notes. Yes. Okay. And I will give you the title of the document that I'm looking at. But generally, generally speaking, the point of the documents is to give background for what is really needed, which is a discussion about uh, the level of services and the additional requests that, that have come before the select board. Um, the finance committee is looking for that for that guidance. They're also providing their own, and then and how it's going to be funded. So the, the guidance that was given by the by the select board and the finance committee to me was to provide uh, some analysis of what level services would look like, while keeping taxes relatively equal to last year's increase. It was somewhere in the vicinity of a, a three percent tax increase. Uh, given the schools increase this year, specific, the specifically the regional school. In the three percent from from Carlisle Public Schools, and mandatory spending increases, specifically the retirement uh, assessment that we have to pay. Almost all of the new revenue is is gone just in the level services budget without doing any type of employee compensation. So if you go to the the second page in the in the budget document, it's called levy analysis. Mm -hmm. Yes, more past page that. nineteen in the packet. So the first column is what was approved last year. The second column is what would be a, a guidance budget. So what would meet that guidance of level services while keeping the taxes the same? And the third column is all the additional requests that were made. And there's only four of note, the sustainability coordinator position, the uh, employee compensation plan, the COHS drivers, and then the stipend from the town clerk, which could be rolled into employee compensation. So. What this levy analysis is showing you, if you just, if we get right to the bottom line, is down in the, all the way down in the bottom, you see the average tax bill. So in a level services budget, you would have approximately the same tax increase that you had last year, even, even a little bit higher at 518 per average house, average house in Carlisle being $1.1 million. If you were to include everything that was requested without doing anything, without cutting anything or adding any revenue, then the annual increase in taxes would be $698. So this is adding approximately 350,000 to that budget to fund those additional requests. So that's the backdrop of the first sheet, which is called, uh, starts with revenue notes. Yeah, uh, Ryan, is it possible to put this up on the screen? Thank you. I meant to do that, I was just too excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nathan can follow it at home. Deborah and uh, okay, so there we go. This yeah. deficit that I've been using this try to create shared language here. So deficit is that three hundred and fifty thousand above the guidance. So in order to get to your to what we're calling your guidance, we we need to do something about the three hundred and fifty thousand in additional requests. So and that you could say three fifty, but it's this three thirty nine figure on here. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Oh, okay, all right. The three hundred and fifty. Thousand includes all those extras that I was talking about. So you could not do any of the extras, which mm -hmm. would get you down to guidance. You could cut other parts of the budget, which would get you down to guidance. You could increase revenue or use one-time funds. Those are kind of the four big buckets. Then I was asked, okay, the employee compensation, what would that actually cost? So once we did that analysis, the, the deficit was focused, more focused at the 339,000. So those two numbers are equivalent. Right. And the yeah. tax impact would be negligible given the difference between the two. So if you walking with me, that deficit is 339,000. So what this document here is showing is an, an analysis of expenses that could be cut. This is low, low hanging fruit or things that would have negligible impact on services that I walked through with the finance committee, totaling about 126,000 in cuts. We could probably find a, a little bit more in, in this, this is uh, some fat in the budget. We could trim the budget in order to fund these new 
these new requests or these requests above guidance. The second section, the deficit analysis, is the specifics of that additional 339,000 so that you can see them line itemed out, right? So you have your health insurance recommendation, a COLA at a 3%, the wage adjustment based off the HRS study and moving people on to a new scale, um, a estimate at the sustainability cost, depending on, on what level of sustainability coordinator and what hours you wanted to fund it, the town clerk stipend, and then the driver request from the COHS. And the health insurance is a 1% increase? That would be a 1%, which to be fair, the finance committee had this critique and I agree with it. You're really talking about where you want health insurance to go. So although it's 1% this year, it's a larger discussion about where you want to end up. So mm -hmm. it has a much bigger impact than just sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. sure. Sixteen it wasn't included in the original budget, and that's why it's considered a correct. Deficit. Correct. So, so I, the, it's a flat. All salaries. All salaries are flat except for obligatory costs, which include. Um, no teachers are contract contractuals are in the big, but no school is yeah. I'm considering school is a done deal. And police. The police and any mandatory contracts we have and any obligations are are considered in there. Any step increases, but there's no. It's all right. We will. No general cola. Right. What about half the town employees? But covered already. Some of the employees get steps, so that would be in there already, right? Yes. So steps are there, but no cola. The only thing that's not there is the cola. and uh, where's the structural. That's a wage analysis. That's that. So if you change the step structure, that's included in this. It is. Okay, good. Um, then we're going to move. Oh, so that, that ends the, the operating budget discussion. So the decision points for you are what new additional costs do we want to incur above your guidance? So that's employee compensation generally, so health insurance, COLA, and any adjustments to the wage scale. And then do you want to add the sustainability position? And then do you want to add van drivers and or a stipend for the town clerk, which I think is rolled up in employee compensation. Although it's there as an additional request, they kind of talk about them the same. And it's, it's small dollars. So that's what is driving this uh, levy discussion. So if you want to keep taxes the same, that's where you have to constrict yourself. Now, there's two other pieces you should consider. One is revenue here is generally conservative. So you could relax your revenue conservation and cut into this deficit with increases in what you're expecting for local receipts, which is which is almost a guarantee, and then what is kind of come in for state aid. So if state aid came in fifty thousand more than we're projecting, then that would eat into that deficit. So the um, let's see. So what you've got here is the projected state aid for FY twenty four. Um, and and the column out to the right would show if we were going to make changes in our estimated revenue, that's where that would show up. So that local receipts line, if you wanted to estimate it, say a hundred thousand yeah. dollars higher, which our budget could tolerate, but it would create some risk, right. and that would cut into your amount that you have to tax. Which right, but that would that. so that you would so so those are the questions for us to consider on the revenue side. But you made yeah. an estimate on that. But I don't see any revenue. changes in them. The, well, the, the state aid has a change. Yes. Yes. Have you, yeah, and the 1.4 million, you've already included that 23. more aggressive assumption. Yeah, but uh, No, that is not an aggressive assumption. So, so, can, so what you haven't changed here is there's uh, this, these assumptions are the conservative ones that are under FY24. Yes, prudently conservative. Okay, right. And you have not changed them in the TAFD. With comp and request, no. Okay. But can I on that topic? I did after I spoke to you. I did look at your TA report where you had a link to the budget that's on the website. Yes. And on that budget, local receipts, uh, you have last year's one point one nine one, and a recommendation of a one percent, which is a lot less than what you have here. So you've already made some assumptions correct that's an old budget on there that's, well, that's what he linked I, I know i'm just saying what he linked no because this is also 1.9 1. that's last year's but no 1.9.82 is fy oh 
Oh, all right. So, no, no. so local receipts. If you remember in the budget discussion, we also moved all of the building department revenue. Uh, and transportation uh, revenue. This does not. Yes. Decouple that. Okay. That's confusing, but it's necessary for. Okay. So you're saying this is a very modest, a 1%. Yes. Okay. And similarly, state aid, then I guess the same, right? 1.864, you recommend 1.920. Oh, that's what you did. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, Can I ask a question about the sustainability position? You're the boss. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, is there any consideration in the scope of this job um, to including some um, grant writing? Let's, well, you want to drop down to that? Um, because, well, that affects the expense. Yeah, and, yeah. And, okay. Let's drop down um, to the um, description, which is starts on page 25 in your packet. It's yeah. the concept paper. Um, it's below the last of the financial papers, financial yeah above the warrant this document was an ask of yeah your, i request to yeah. say if we had our if we had our way julie and i what would we what would we recommend for a sustainability position assuming that you wanted to fund it at a at a higher level higher level meaning someone that works more than part time yeah so just uh, you know refresh our memories the um, we had a grant to fund a part-time person this year that that ends the end of June. Um, that was the one we were sharing with Westford. We don't anticipate doing that again. And so, um, and this is also something that's been, you know, very strongly requested by the Environmental Sustainability Committee, uh, but they didn't provide us a, a, a any kind of a job description. I asked uh, Ryan and Julie, yeah, to to give us some idea about what these duties might be. And it does include in it down near the, the yeah, second to last bullet grant opportunities. Um, Sorry, I did read that and it didn't penetrate. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is, um, you know, yeah. what's in here is at a 30 hours a week with a salary range 56 to 64. Um, and again, this is just to give us something specific to discuss but it's not set in stone so why why 30 hours and why this salary range we we believe we need a what we would call a doer so an educated doer yeah. someone to do the work of sustainability to prove the concept so this person would serve under the town planner at the direction of the town planner focusing on specific activities that would move carlisle forward on, on its sustainability path while supporting myself and the esc so myself being to help make the capital plan and the town hall more sustainable and the ESC and their request or their quest to do all of it, plus a work on some of the resident side of the house with reducing carbon and other impacts in the town. The 30 and grant, right? I'm sorry, the grant writing part of it would be beyond just sustainability. That would be grants across the town. So I, I take more of a holistic approach to grants. It should be a combination of myself the town planner and the sustainability coordinator identifying grants the only problem that that i have with including grants the grants are great if we want grants is we don't really know where we're going or what we're doing which needs to be the the honest truth about where sustainability is what does the town want to do we have to decide that before we go get grants otherwise it's cart before the horse i, I agree with that but i still want to get once we decide i certainly would like to find the grants so that's because it may because it is it's yes it's cart and horse but on the other hand um if you don't have the cart the you know if you don't have the money for some of these ideas you can't do them anyway so green community know. is a good example it's it's a good it's a good program it requires constant updating and staff and that's what's lapsed so there wasn't anyone focused on green yeah. community so we're trying to refocus on it yeah. But it does take us away from other opportunities, and we need to analyze whether or not the money that's coming in from green communities is is helpful. Otherwise, it's just yeah. staff work to look good getting grants. <laughs> yeah. and one other question about the job description before you move on, Ryan. At 30 hours a week, we're already paying benefits, right? Yeah. Yes. Isn't it, I mean, you know, given the shock of the previous pages that you showed us, isn't it just a marginally increase to just go ahead and hire somebody full time, which would probably attract more people? You mean five hours more a week? 
Yeah, because you're already paying benefits. Yes, there's some some thought in here that you know four day week work week um, some focus would would overcome that five hours worth of monetary gain. So we save some efficiency there, but it, you know what we're really asking is, do you want to do you want to fund this position? Is it worth cutting into other parts of the budget and the tax impact? And um, how much? You could say twenty hours. You could say forty, and we'll tell you the what you're going to get out of that. Barney, I had a question for you. You said that uh, we we weren't going to move forward. We have a, a shared agreement right now with Westford. Is that right? And, right. But we're not going to do that again why did it not work or what's the rationale well, yeah what's behind that decision pardon what's behind, yeah, what, what's behind that oh well it's it i mean Ryan would know more than i do on this but it's um we could it do. was a grant opportunity in westford i think i think it was a mutual decision that we it's, it didn't work out as well as we hoped, but go ahead, Ryan. Do you have more you want to say on it? It's not, it's not this, uh, it's just that the grant funding is gone. So you have to make a decision to continue the position in some, so if you say can try to work with Westford to continue, continue the position as is, that's still going to have a cost impact that's close to what this is. If we want half of a position, uh, if you want a full-time position, then I don't think that Westford would be a good partner. And we are a very different community than Westford with different sustainability goals. Our sustainability committees have different visions and the select board is still deciding on its sustainability vision. So I, I don't think it would be a good monetary decision to split a person with Westford unless you had some really specific goals and I don't think we're there. But, but we have specific goals, don't we? No, we're not the same as Westford, is what you're saying. So what I'm saying is you don't. This is a vision that we tried to could be what it is, but you have to decide on what it is. We have a, you know, we have we we haven't other than the discussion we had with the ESC last fall, and then their decision to focus on the um, route to sustainability day for April 22nd, and then the um, stretch code. There is there is their um their work plan hasn't been translated into what would you say an action plan a set of priorities for this next fiscal year um there's just a whole bunch of very ambitious um right. proposals there so that that would need to be I mean I think in some ways this the our town planner and if we funded this position would be really honing in and bringing to the select board okay here are the here's some recommendations about how to actually implement what's in that work plan right and we we're just we need to drive that as a select board as opposed to the uh, you know we haven't really given any specific guidance to the um, right. environmental sustainability committee beyond that initial conversation about their work plan well or to you know maybe go at it from another angle the the McLean administration wants to do the stuff and no seriously and doesn't want the nighttime government doing they want the nighttime government guiding true right so they need doers as he said and doers are you know can be not necessarily managers they are just doers right and we already have a town planner so the resource would be a staff position that would be under the guidance of the town government the question i mean it's two questions maybe come to mind one is the one he's identified which is as a starter do you want to use is it an appropriate use of arpa which is justifiable but in other ways sort of a budget gimmick to get out of this two hundred thousand dollar hole right it's one of the levers as he said the other question for us this is probably to me the more important question is we clearly can't do everything so even tonight we talked about maybe a six figure study, but at least a four, you know, four forty thousand dollars study for uh this build these buildings. Um Kate certainly is interested in acquiring land and doing some things for affordable housing. And, you know, we've we're sort of at this point maybe paying lip service, but there is a real interest in the town to be sustainable. But we can't do it all. 
And so we really have to think about our own prioritization, which I think is what, you know, Fincom and Ryan have been asking. But I, I, I don't know. I, I think I would challenge you on that one because we, we have some choices that um, about what we um, uh, want to put in our budget in terms of the estimates about income, revenue, and um, our spending and looking at the different sources of money that are available to the town. I think we can do it all. The question is, as a um, as um, sort of policy or vision, do we want to try to do, um, you know, really make a serious push around sustainability at the same time that we're going to move ahead on figuring out the police and fire um, and, you know, manage our, our town budget so that it's reasonable and people can continue to afford to live here. Well, yeah, I, I think I would. No, but I'm just saying, I don't think to say we can't do it. I think to say we can't do it all, I, I don't agree with that. Well, I'm not, let me rephrase. I think it, go ahead. I, I mean, I think it's clear we can't do anything we want to do, right? I mean, we can't do it all. Um, but so we have to pick those that we can do. And, you know, if, if we look back at what we saw here before, you know, if I was, re, if I was hearing Ryan right, our annual tax increase on the average size home just for current level service is estimated at $518, right? So that's our starting point. And I think we just need to be really careful. You know, I'm not being a naysayer on sustainability or anything like that. I was the one asking if we, you know, why not 35 hours? But that that's our starting point, and we just have to be careful if we're moving other level levers in order to make these numbers change, or if we're bringing in cash from somewhere else. We have to make sure that we understand what happens when that's not available. You know, we're committing the future to these things of what we're doing. So I agree with David. I think we just have we have to be really really careful here. I agree, and I, it's some of these things we keep using ARPA, and I feel like we're gonna. Yeah. Have overcommitted ARPA to everything. Like the producers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, with my ARPA hat on, um, I, I would not be uh, in favor of using it for operation. Yeah, well, I think that'd be crazy, yeah. right? It'd be crazy to do agree, that because what do that. we do when it's not there? That's that's exactly why I'm not in favor of using it for any anything operational. So it does depend on. I'm sorry to, to keep pushing you as, on this, but it does depend on your goals. So if the goal is to make the town more sustainable is, is that a two-year push is that a five-year push is it a 20-year push if it's a 20-year push then it is absolutely crazy to use one-time funds if if you wanted to look at it as an extension of the grant to see what you would accomplish then it is you just have to be disciplined and, and not say like this is just going to creep into the operating budget in three years i think it's a forever push sustainability is not going to suddenly not be a thing in two years but you don't necessarily need to dedicate a staff member to sustainability for, for 20 years it, it could be something that you, you fix your policy, your approach, and you build some plans, and then that just falls under the purview of the existing staff. Somehow, <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I don't think yeah, so. I, I think, you know, just, just yeah. to kind of get us back a little bit, the sustainability role is only one of many we need to consider, right? Yeah. And not just in a role, but one of many things that we need to consider in this new budget. Right. And Ryan, if we're looking, if we're looking at what, you know, what you were saying, our increase was here, you know, for all of the things that were, that had been discussed, does that include any of the articles that may be put in front of the town or any, any other additional costs that may be outside of just the regular operating budget? I'm intentionally separating the two because the constraints that you have on the operating side are are less on the one-time cost side, the capital side. That's more of a prioritization. So the whether or not you fund a roof doesn't really impact your long-term operating costs, except if you're talking about generation of free cash, which comes into the, your conservatism of, of revenue. But they're they're kind of oh, we have to pay for those capital expenses, right? You know, we we have to factor those expenses in when we're thinking about how much operating expense we can have. 
because it all adds to right our tax right yeah it's it's why someone like i'm me, sorry i just realized i don't have my video on i'm sorry it's why someone like me is like when you're talking about arpa or free cash it doesn't it doesn't matter to me you would just spend the only the only thing that matters is the flexibility but how much flexibility so you should spend so ryan in the operating budget is there a placeholder for capital like the normal 250k or something is that part of that budget no so there's zero capital spend in this budget you're presenting uh large cap there's zero and in the past we've had a little bit in the operating side right like the 250 i'm not sure that let me say it a different way so the capital requests that are routinely approved that are smaller items they're not roofs and things are usually tucked inside a bucket like a truck like a police car or something is usually in a maybe it's not a good example but in prior budgets there's been a, a capital line in the operating budget right that's not in this baseline budget right? it's not no. so that so we're already in addition to the 500 are we in even 250 above where we would be apples to apples with last year I didn't see a line in last year's budget. Okay. I don't recall. There are some places yeah. where there's additional funds like yeah. maintenance costs, for example, or yeah. IT that have some capital built costs built into it, but those are being eaten away by contracts and other commitments that you've made. Yeah, there was no capital line. That's that, no, no. Last year there it was, was all it was all in form of warrant warrants. It was all warrants. Okay. It was all warrants. Okay. Fair enough. And if you look at page 23 in your packet, that's the requested Warren articles um, with, and some of them have a price tag attached. Yeah, no, I, I that part I know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe okay. That. I think we're going to, Nathan was asking about that. Oh. So I think I, I pulled this off thing, but um, I would like to us to kind of talk about the deficit analysis. Um, certainly the sustainability is one of the big items um i don't consider the you know i think we should try to make some decisions about that or give some guidance about those items the, all the ones under deficit analysis yes know? yeah um I, I just go launch in personally i'm very much in favor of um increasing the health insurance benefits over the next 10 years um or how many every years um i um i think a cola at three percent for this year is a perfectly um reasonable one we've been giving two for the past several years um there's been a lot of we have you know a lot of inflation on the news i think three percent cola with the wage analysis um would go a long way towards morale and um the good stewardship of our staff, so to speak. Uh, so I'm totally in favor of that. I'm going to skip over sustainability because I think we have a lot of discussion that we need to have around that one. And I'm I'm also in favor of the other two. But so the the only one I'm kind of squishy on personally is the sustainability one. Well, I'm. Uh very supportive of the wage analysis um, proposals. I think, um, and maybe we all are, in, in which case we could, you know, agree around that. But um, as we are seeing, you know, we have some staff that have um, made decisions to move on. Um, and I think uh, that's partly because of our being out of sync with the market. And then I also think we have some inherent, um, um, what's the right word, maybe inequity in where some of the middle range staff are in terms of their um, pay. And this would adjust, it would um, address that. And I, I think that's gonna be very important for the uh, future of the town hall staff in terms of, um, their ability and their willingness to, you know, their desire to stay.
so if we took this 339, if we separated out the 65, whether it's ARPA funds or just doesn't make the cut list, we're talking about 148,000. And let me ask you a question. So typically in a year, in any given year, we use some free cash. Uh, and you could make an argument, or let me propose an argument without necessarily advocating for it, that because this year on the operational side, we have this huge 600 and something thousand dollar bump as a result of an assessment with the, from the region, that it's okay to use a little free cash because it's like a ramp. You know, it's not a, we're very, you know, certainly I'm one of the ones and others, Nathan, I hear it, and definitely FinCom is not an advocate of, you know, getting hooked on free cash. But if you have like these extraordinary, even if they're operational, if they're extraordinary in sort of one time, you can use some free cash. So 150,000, let's call it our free cash. Yeah. It, where we're sitting, you know, well above, we didn't really get to that part, but it's in this analysis that we're, I don't know, 16% instead of 12%, which is, you know, we're like the highest in the Commonwealth or something, right? You're in the top something. Side of it. Yeah. Anyway, so I can see what, I can see funding those things and using free cash to do that, I yeah. guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, we're, you're talking, as you said, it's 148 to, if you take that 65 out and the 126 of the expenses that, Ryan says you yeah, can you cook. You, you got one forty eight too. Right, and you use free cash, yes. and then then you're set operationally. That's you've done cash, some, and you're you're set. Yeah, you've addressed those important things yeah. about staff and blah blah blah. And and by the way, you survived a year where there was a huge huge, huge. increase in the yeah. uh, regional school. Right. Yeah. I will it just seems like we're putting an awful lot of potentially operational things into that free cash. What do you mean, Nathan? Which? Well, I mean, I, so, you know, I think we, we kind of need to get, you know, I, I think maybe Ryan wasn't provided the opportunity to finish, you know, the requested Warren articles part, right? You know, the, the cost of that, it looks to me like we're not able yeah. to pay for all of funded. that. So if I could. Okay, yeah. I think it's helpful, especially for the finance committee. So if you went to. Yeah very last page of this section called reserve calculations with current budget. Reserve. So this is, um, I got it. Okay. You got it there. Where is that? It's, it's just page 24. Yes. Okay. A couple more down. Yeah. So these are our, our current reserve levels. Uh, stabilizations at 1.2 million and free cash is at 4.2 million for a total of 5.4 million in reserve. So that 12% comes from a, a buffering of, of what is normally considered to be prudent. So 10% of your operating budget is considered to be a standard for reserve level, a target that you want to hit. 12% is leaning towards the more conservative nature of budgeting here, which is a good thing. So if you took the reserves and you minus, uh, if you subtracted the 12% and you spelled additional, right? So I apologize yeah. for that line. Then you're what I'm calling capacity. So creating shared language here, this is Funds available above 12% would be 1.4 million. Mm, yeah. And not necessarily at all advocating for spending all of that, right. but that is above 12%. So if you took everything in the capital plan, which again, I'm not necessarily recommending, and the Warren articles minus any conversation about when you were having tonight, that's not included in this, you would have a free cash impact of around 1.2 ish million. And you would still have 260,000 available to put it back into your reserves or put your reserve level around 13%. Um, so go back for a second. And you said the, um, <laughs> the expenses, um, you've got the warrant articles and the capital plan, but you're saying this doesn't include the um, items listed outside the guidance in the operating budget, right. correct? Correct. So if you took okay. what David just said and put 150,000, that would eat into that 263,000 and you would still have 100,000 over your target reserve. Well, I think, yeah, let's not take, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I think, and we really do because of time, I think we need to switch to the capital and warrants. 
because as Nathan points out, those are being those are being proposed to be financed through free cash. So I'm just saying as a placeholder, we can we should come back to it. But if as Ryan points out, if we're sitting at 1.4 million above a very conservative 12%. Yes. Right. Okay. And we don't have to spend it all in one year and we shouldn't spend it all in one year, but one ten percent of that to take care of an operational issue in a year where we had a big jump on the region, which hopefully won't be repeated for a while. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And then we can say, okay, on the operational budget side, right. let me I'm again, I'm just hypothesizing. Let me take 150,000 of that 1.4 million, set it aside for operations. Yeah. Now let's go look at the 200, uh, 250,000 of Warren Articles XCPA and the million something of the other list yeah. and decide how much of that we want to do. That's my opinion. I would, I would agree. I would agree with that, David, completely. As long as we can look at what we think that, you know, our percentage, our number is going to be. And we can say, yes, it's here's a blip. It's it's yeah. a temporary blip. I would totally agree that that's a good use of this because that way we're not, you know, we're not doing a higher tax rate for something that's not going to be needed over time. Right. 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 Okay. So briefly so let, with the capital plan, just to jump into the that eight hundred. That's a lot of money. Eight hundred thousand. Yeah. So you're on page uh, twenty in so this packet, color, right? The yeah. The color coded oh, graph. Green down the middle is current year. Yep. And then FY24 is the FAR. So this is just honing in on 24, not the uh, the remainder of the capital plan. The reason for that is I think the school committee, the finance committee, myself, the MFC have identified that we need a, a better longer term plan. But for FY24, we're, we're pretty close. We're almost there. So what Scott was talking about with ARPA tonight, and this is conversations that, that you should know, is targeting some of these items in FY24 to lower that $800,000 cost, take the pressure off free cash by using some ARPA funds. Yeah. One of them that's been discussed is that elevator, that $130,000 for the schools. If you move down, me on the list. Um, conversation. I thought we already did the elevator. That's another. Did a different, different elevator. elevator. Different elevator. All right. Yeah. Um, the um, the items here identified for the DPW, I've prioritized um, based off conversation with Gary. So that's some the of those, second page. Yep. Yeah. Some of those yeah. can go away. Some. What can you be more yeah, descriptive? The, oh, twenty-two. Bucket lift truck. Bucket list. Stand body. I don't think a bucket truck is on anybody's bucket list, but that's okay. Bucket lift. Oh, okay. Sorry, I always thought I was saying. <laughs> and then the roadside mower. To be fair, in conversation with the DPW. These are items that are needed for for safety and for operation. But yeah, and also just to remind everybody, when we did the the street light project, we took over responsibility for the street lights, and so Gary needs a way of getting there. He currently rents, and that I don't know how much that is, but so he would prioritize it's a long delay. The dump truck with the sand body, which is connected, for a two hundred ten thousand dollar cost, and he would push the the bucket truck and the roadside mower as wants the bucket truck is important for employee safety though so i don't want to just punt it i do think it should be addressed at some point and then um there's two cruisers before you leave dpw so i'm not clear on which ones you're advocating then sand body you said number one dump truck and okay. dump. they go together they go together and the dump truck so that those are the two you you were recommending to if you were going to kick <clears throat> those would be prioritized as one and okay. two and then okay. bucket truck three, roadside mower four. Okay, bucket truck. Okay, okay. Can I wait a second? Why are we talking about um, uh, twenty four? What happened to twenty three? Why why are we not talking about salt shed and the roof? We already paid for that. We already we're bought. in that. Yeah. We're in twenty three. We're in twenty four. Twenty three. Kind of, but I don't want to confuse this too much. Oh well. MFC has funds for these things. Some of them might appear on capital plans in the future if those funds run out. We're working on it. We're in the house doctor. Okay. Get on this. All right. All right. I just sorry because I I knew it hadn't been done yet, so I was just worried that. So, okay, got it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So then there's two cruisers in here. I think that's always a discussion point whether or not you need two in this year, and then yeah, the IT upgrades that I'm suggesting, um, I think that number is high given all the other constraints on the budget. 
we do need to start replacing our computers. 25,000 every year would, would make a significant dent. The idea was to get a lot of it done this year. So if you took a lot of that out, you're closer to 600,000 then. Can we, can we go back to the CPS? So you, you took one item and said suggested ARPA, but there's a, a few other items. They, they have they prioritized their list. This is the, this is heavily prioritized by the school committee. Meaning in the order as presented. Meaning these items are operationally necessary, or mission critical. All of them, not in rank order. So, freezers and cameras, everything's even. Then is what you're saying here. They removed about 1.3 million from their original request to get down to these. Mission critical items. No, oh, but let's see the. Okay, we you're still only talking about the twenty four mm -hmm. column. Okay. Okay, so you're saying for CPS 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, he's got 140. The bottom of the, the, well, no, I want to go, just, but he's taking something to 140. 140, you may, you confuse me now. 10, 20. 100, 140, 190. So 190K of X, the ARPA elevators, what they're saying they need. Then you're saying that if we took the top two of DPW, you're at 212, right? The two things, 180, 32. One cruiser at 60. And IT at 25. Is that your list? Yeah, you got two cruisers, don't you? Well, I thought he advocated stripping one out could do with one well we're trying to strip no, out here not i'm saying i'm trying to react to the sticker shock being too high these are all things that that need to be paid for at some point so whether you do it in 24 25 well, we typically buy one cruiser a year don't we don't we two by two, two. One, one, two. we had one year where we bought one and a half yeah i was going to say we <laughs> yeah and a one and a half the next year for a total of three so um but i i think all of these are certainly you know, in terms of the of what the ARPA set out to do for the, you know, when they wanted to make recommendations to us, uh, was that one time, you know, capital expenditures would be a great use of that money. So certainly, I think there's no reason not to think that this should be. Um, I'm trying to keep this at the at the heart. So my recommendation would be the MFC has some targets in FY23 that it's not going to get to. Its funding is going to run out for those. You should reserve some of the ARPA to overcome those costs and make sure that the FY23 stuff doesn't pop up back again in 24, 25. Well, because the money will get returned. It wasn't spent. The money will be returned to the town. Yeah. Right, because it, nothing was bonded. It wasn't actually, is it already in free cash till you spend it or it's been sec so it will come back to free cash? Yeah. yeah. It will, but you have more projects than you can yes. fund. So then the projects will can be we I was just gonna ask, can we can we pay for studies for police and fire out of the MFC money that might go away? Yeah. I'd have to ask Kelly. Uh no. I don't think so. No, not the way the warrants are written. It's only for the maintenance and uh, you know. Are any of those sunsetting now or in a year from now? You're yes, but we're gonna spend enough to not sunset any. So seven hundred will carry. Mm -hmm. We have the same problem next year. So then the Warren articles, some more. So the Conservation Commission is considering $58,000 between the cranberry bog NOIs and mm -hmm. the uh, invasive plants. Yep. That may or may not be for this year. So that's definitely worth confirming before it becomes a recommended Warren article. Can, excuse me, can those, why, can those not be covered by CPA Monday? They were not included in the, were not included in the timeline that was given. Well, that could be done in the fall because see, that's not really a, a, you know, I don't I don't see spending. I highly agree. <laughs> new tax yeah, money so, um, revenue the uh, when there's we, that money that's sitting there for their use. Right. The one we know we can't use is um for the yeah. Greeno Barn. Yeah. Yes, that I understand yeah. the Greeno Barn, but yeah. Uh, but you're right. The others, the other ones, absolutely should be paid with CPA money. I agree. With, I agree with that. So then, the the final question that we have is: Let's say you do shave all of this free cash, then those problems aren't going away. So there needs to be some direction to me, the staff, the finance committee, to 
Okay, you freed up all these funds to have them, but they're going to be in your reserve, which is already at a level. So what is the plan moving forward to, to use it? Well, we have a stabilization fund that needs to be filled also. But that is for <laughs> spending on things and evening out costs. So even if you put well, it stable, you're basically just putting it in a fancy fund, spending it. And you need to figure out what you want to spend it on and spend it. Yeah, well, There'll never be a shortage of things to spend money on. I think I like what Kate said. If CPA is sitting there and it's just a timing issue, then make it go away, right? Why, why spend our- There's no reason why it can't be- Last way. thing we should do is spend it. We should spend all sources before we spend free cash, right? We should make sure we flush ARPA, we flush grants, we flush CPA, right? We should use all the things that are there, in my opinion. And doesn't free cash going up just mean that maybe we're not- being really good at deciding what we're putting, what we can do, and therefore we're charging a higher tax than is necessary? Yes. It's partly because we haven't had enough staff to see that a lot of these projects actually get done. And so instead of doing them serious, serially, many of these um, maintenance HVAC things, I think, should be done in parallel. There's no reason why we're doing one building at a time when they all have the same needs. They, they should be all done. Except we have limited resources for that, right? And in this case, now it's limited staffing. It's resources. limited we've staffing got, resources. Now we do. Yeah. We have, gained, we have increased our resources because Ryan is working on this house doctor who's going to Hell. And Julie. And Julie, and who, who yes. provide the the support to get these things done. Whereas the committee, like the MFC, just couldn't get enough traction to get it done. Now we are on a different path, I think. Yeah. And not having been on. But is your priority to make sure you spend the stuff that might sunset first and then get to the new stuff, or you want to do it all at what's the capacity? I guess I'm not well, we're trying to spend the existing things that have been right. But that should be the priority, right? right? So is. these are new things, right? As long as the funds don't run out, which they probably yeah. mind you, one of the things was backfilled with ARPA, so that that the MFC already had money for basically, and that was the RTU and the library. But you know, anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> there were still other things the MFC needed the money for. That's why this is a, I think, more integrated conversation because as you move to having Steve Kinnearney and you know a, a whole. Yeah group in charge of this rather than the MFC, yes. things are getting done a lot more effectively and efficiently. Yeah. And you'll see that, I think, over the next 12 months or even sooner. You're already seeing it. Or we're, I'm seeing All right, it. So how many? OK, so you've got the backlog of stuff that you have to finish. But that's not even on this list, right? 23. So, oh, OK, so all the 23 things. And then plus you, ARPA. Go ahead. Yes. Right. Then, well, right. Then you have. Um, CPA, let's say, let's assume those, those top three, they just all go to CPA in different times. Then you got a couple hundred thousand down here. We agree, Greenell Barn, and we really didn't talk about chart of accounts, but let's lump all that together. That's a couple hundred thousand. And then you have all this other stuff. How much of all this other stuff can you get done? Like we should only authorize what we think we can get done. I wish I had the MFC here. I don't think... I don't know. Do you have thoughts on that? I mean, yeah, we're going to get it done. <laughs> Eight hundred eighty-four thousand worth, if, or if or you commit to that, and you can do it, Ryan. With especially now with Steve and and how that's structured, then yeah, then we'll get it done. And I'll make a point of saying that as we move through. I guess my general point is the point of having free cash is the flexibility of free cash, but yeah. if you're not going to use it. And it doesn't have any utility. Doesn't, yes. If you, there's no point in having flexibility if you're not being flexible for something, like mm -hmm. right. fixing a large town problem. So I got the, again, from your website, from the website, I got the 10-year plan, our website. And it shows that, um, let's see, the first column's 24, right? So heavily updated, but. Right, but two and a half million dollars of stuff and then two million dollars of stuff. And then we take a breather and then a million dollars of stuff and blah, blah, blah. So where'd all that stuff go? Because it's still going to be there and we're still going to need free cash in the out years. It's been pushed. It's been pushed at the request of of town officials who want to see the number smaller. 
So it just right. gets pushed. But eventually it comes up. And so why not have a lot of free cash available to do that stuff? Yes. Okay. As long as when it comes up, the answer is we're going to do it. Well, that's why, I mean, you've made the point, right? Our capital plan, you used a certain word I won't repeat here, but it needs help. And it needs I, to be real. It needs to be real and multi year, right? You got to take, it's hard to, it's kind of like our discussion about fire station, police station. Like we're doing this blind man and the elephant thing on a single year basis. It would be good to know the next few years of need to answer the question of how do we spend the largesse that we're fortunate enough to have in extra free cash? I see the symptom of the capital plan as something that you should really consider, which is your departments tend to request more than they need and more money than they need because they don't think that you'll fund things. Right. So it's not that the need has gone away. It's that they, they have been conditioned to say, I need to, Right, but you wire brushed it, right? I mean, the, the school committee said we need these few things. Gary said these are my one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. So you've done that. The sim that's the symptom. The, the actual problem. I get it, but I'm just saying. That's why you have bad buildings. That's why you don't. Okay. So the but we're but don't compound the problem by giving us a 2024 snapshot without giving us 25, 26, 27, 28. Right. I have no idea what's to the right of this chart. And therefore, how much free cash we should use to this year compared with next year. But when you said, when we said there was a million dollars in real costs, yeah. the the main response that I got from, from this board and the finance committee was make that smaller. But it, even if you make it smaller, it doesn't mean the problem went away. It just means you pushed it to the right. So the the commitment needs to be to make the 10-year plan real. Okay. So for me personally. You want to see the 10-year plan. Well, I'm saying I'm willing to commit. He's giving me a chicken and egg argument. I, I'm willing to commit to, personally, I'm just speaking for me. I'm willing to commit to spending down that extra free cash on much needed capital items. But the question and you know that we're raising is why spend all, you know, a million of the million four like this year when we don't know what 25 and 26 look like? It would be better to see at least a few years of it so that we know how much we can comfortably. It's not, I agree that it's a bad system and we all suffer from it, but it's it's not that we don't wanna spend the money, it's that we're not sure we wanna spend all the money without knowing what's coming down the pike. That's why we're conservatively hoarding it. And we're over hoarding, I get it, but it's like too dramatic. It should be, we should see what the next couple of years hold for us to be able to decide maybe the 800,000 is correct. But maybe we don't need two, two cruisers. Maybe the mower does wait a year. I, I, I have no basis of evaluating that. Yes, I agree. We, you need to have a 10-year plan. You don't. Okay. You have a one-year plan. But you could have a three-year. I mean, I know, but we have a budget coming up. I mean, you could, you could identify the next column, right? It's sort of here. It just needs to be scrubbed. Yes. Okay. All right, so where are we? Uh, <laughs> I think I just want to say I think this has been a fabulous discussion. No, it, it, it's very helpful. It is. That's been a good discussion for you. Well, no, I think actually no, I I don't agree. I don't agree. I think it sounds like we have a consensus around the operational budget and the use of one hundred fifty thousand of free cash. It it sounds to me, and I don't want to for the operation one hundred uh, fifty thousand of the free cash to make the operational we've prioritized the operational budget we we haven't really settled about the coordinator that coordinator okay so that's um, that's i haven't heard from other folks david besides um kate about the other items on here the health insurance full of wage analysis so okay we might um you're right i guess for, for me it really comes down to what the big picture is. And I'm not saying it's got to be a 10 year plan or even that much detail on next year plan, but knowing in this year, if we were to decide all the warrant articles, you know, if the warrant article goes, town meeting decides what it is, all of that's going to have an impact um, on the budget and having a good solid understanding of what are we going to be able to spend out of this year's budget and what might have to be pushed into a future year. I think all of that is just something 
you know, it's hard to decide is it three and a half or three or two and a half cola without knowing really what is the bottom line, you know, because all of this again is pushing obviously conservative numbers, but it's pushing us over that already $550 a year increase in taxes, which is a large increase. Um, well, so yeah. I don't feel comfortable going through and saying, okay, yeah, we can do the COLA because I don't know how we're spending all that, all the rest of that money, whether it's future, you know, whether it's a three-year plan or not, just understanding like really definitively, what are we going to be using free cash for? What are we going to be using CPA money for? You know, we don't want to spend all CPA now because we may want to do housing in the future. Um, and so I, I just think we need to be careful as to where we're funding these things and, and have a really good understanding of that before saying, yes, we want to do this. And yes, we want to do that. Generally, I think they're all great ideas. You know, I, I support them all. It's just a prioritization when we see that bottom bottom line number. I, I think, um, Nathan, uh, it's No, just, it's not because we, we, we've just kind of glossed over all of these things, right? No, I think it doesn't push us over the 518 um, uh, increase. Tax, yeah. Um, if you use ARPA and free cash, am I, is that? That's correct, and CPA. And CPA. That's correct. So it keeps it at, you know, so you can have all those things, all of the things, if you use 100, well, and, and actually, if, 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 if you just accepted all of those things, included the, including the sustainability, instead of be 150, it'd be $200,000 of um, right. free cash, um, 126,000 of cut expenses that Ryan has um, identified, and then uh, using the free uh, using cash more free cash for CPA and money for the warrant articles, many of the warrant articles, uh, ARPA for the. Um, okay, then maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I misunderstood that. So what we're talking about is all of these things, including all the capital um, items and everything, would be paid for by cash. We wouldn't borrow for any of them. No, we're not borrowing. Yeah, no. Was that a yes or a no? But it's spending. I wouldn't money. recommend borrowing. You don't... That's right. It, so the the answer to that, your last question is actually yes. That we would not borrow for anything. What were you about to say? Interesting. No. Okay. Um, so one, uh, you know, a different way to frame it, Nathan, might be to say, we want to keep the average tax bill at X amount. And then we say, we do want to fund X, Y, and Z. What, you know, what, what does that then mean we're doing in terms of spending? How would we do that um, with the funds that we have available to us? Yeah, so along that line, that, that 550, I'm just trying to get back to the page. Yeah. Was there was there like a a percentage increase there? What uh, what is that percentage increase? It's a uh, five hundred dollars. Three point one or oh one or three, no, I got a different one. number. I got three point two five. Five hundred eighteen, six four forty eight over fifteen nine thirty is three point two five. Okay. And the historic, I did the numbers there. The historic. So, if you're looking year over year using these numbers. So fiscal 20 over 19 was 2.7%. Fiscal 21 over 20 was minus 2.7%. But I think that was during the COVID where we played right, some games. So they kind of zeroed themselves out. Then 22, 15, 438 over 15, 164, 1.8%. 1 Following your fiscal 23 last year, 3.2%. And we're kind of in line with that, 3.25%. So we're right in that over the threes, which is yet another question. And again, I mean, we're gonna to have to close this out today because we're gonna just run out of time, but given you know the latest kerfuffle, which I agree is a minority of people, but it's a noisy minority, you know, what kind of percentage are we comfortable with? Just as a percentage, because people will look at that. And I, and I don't know, I mean, I tend to look at percentages 
Ryan and it sounds like Nathan focus more on the actual dollar that the average house sees. But either way, I mean, we should no. For me, it would be percentage. I was just it just on this. It I was mean, a, nobody's a average, right? So I think the percentage to me is important. I mean, prop two and a half is there for a reason, right? It's a long time reason. Two and a half percent increase is just enough to kind of survive and not enough to get like fat. <laughs> and so towns like us were no different. Have survived by new growth and other things to make that two and a half bigger right because you always have bigger uh and we're in a very we're in a, we're in a pretty low growth time in terms of new starts and we have these other pressures you know i'm okay with three percent but we need to be comfortable as a percentage of what we want to sort of bracket that tax increase to be Um, how much is one um, percent of cola? Is it? Um, let me see. What did you say? About Fifty percent cola is um, close to one hundred percent because I'm mean, hundred thousand yeah. because yeah of your floor colas in your contracts. Uh, so um, well, because wait a second. So it's not like you you can't say it's like uh, you can't give me a percent um or a dollar amount for a percent sure you can sure you can About the third of the 160 that's what i that's what i thought okay yeah it's, it's not quite but yeah all right for so that's 50 um 56 55 56 thousand dollars well you know um and so a half a percent is only twenty five thousand or so so I don't know that it's worth giving two and a half percent cola for twenty five thousand. Yeah, I mean um, everybody's suffering and everybody. Yes, exactly. I mean that's the thing I can tell you from you know many years of negotiating with unions. Is that's the thing people look at the most, right? Because that's really what you use to pay your fill your gas tank and all those things. Well, it is, although it is the least amount of money in their pocket. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's hundred, it's only a couple hundred bucks at the end of the day. So that's why, you know, because it's only a half a percent of their, of their, you know, and, uh, again, salary. So um, do we know, do we have an idea where the state's going to land on their COLA? That's a good question. We'll know on March 1st. Okay. And where do we know where they were last year? That's a, can we just look it up? Yeah. Let me uh, I just want to run here. Rhode Island just did theirs, I think in January and it was 2%. I'm not suggesting that's what we do. I'm just wondering what the yeah. state is doing. Uh, effective. Oh, well. What do we want to get done here? But by yeah, I'm just that. thinking. So yeah, I guess so. For me, the bottom line would be: I support all of these things. I really do. I su I support the sustainability. I support them all, but I really just, you know, reserve the right to change my mind ba based upon <laughs> where we actually end up and where we're pulling the money from in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah, the next uh, meeting is a joint one with FinCom, but I think we as a board need to have uh, some clarity yeah. about saying to the FinCom, these are our priorities, whatever yeah. those are. And also if we are in agreement that we're comfortable this year, you know, using free cash beyond what we might've done in the past because of the um, increase in our uh, share of school expenses, then we we need to be able to say that, and and similarly, if we are committed to keeping the tax burden basically at three percent or or whatever number we arrive at, to be able to say that. So yeah. Um, Can I make a suggestion? Yes, I, I would. It's quarter of almost ten of ten. So I and we didn't even cover HR. This is really important, and I agree with Nathan. It's very substantive, and I think it's important. We originally planned to have this kind of discussion with FinCom, and I'm glad it worked out the way it did because I think that's even more variables. Yeah. I'm glad we had the chance, and this is really the first chance we've had as a board 
to deliberate about these things. And it takes a lot of absorption. I would be comfortable if we did two things. Ryan went back and produced maybe a three-year capital spend, the next two years included, so we can see what that looks like, and have a shorter but a very focused session like next week. Mm -hmm. And go back at this after we've thought about it with that information. And by the way, we can do the HR bylaw then because I think I'm pretty tired right now. My brain. Next week is school vacation week, and I'm going to be going. Can we? Okay. Well, we. Not that, no. I mean, um, it's got to be before the 28th, right? So. Yeah, which would mean. Um, school town halls open either. except for President's Day, right? Yeah. Or but yeah. we'd either have to try to meet. Well, what's today? Monday. So we could actually meet. This could meet week, later this week. Thursday, for example. Same yeah, which is when FinCon. I'm okay with that. Or we could squeeze in a meeting the Monday night before our meeting on the 28th, right? We'd meet yeah, on the 28th. Either of those. Just, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, that's... I, my preference would be maybe this week while we're still yeah. fresh in our minds, so. 28th, don't we already have a... We have, but we're meeting with FinCom, so... Okay. The point is saying we can do it. We need one more. We need one more hour. I think we need one more hour to make these decisions and say, okay, we've yeah. thought about it and we can talk to Fink. I agree. And I think, you know, um, yeah. I, so I agree. let's see quickly I how many people could do. Thursday. I can't do Yeah. So, Nathan, how about for you on this Thursday evening? Um, this Thursday evening. the 16th um i could do i just have a lot of cal calendars to look at hold on uh this thursday is the 11th right 16th. Um, no it's the 16th you must oh i'm sorry that's may calendar. that's may that's may okay yeah. uh thursday <laughs> talk about getting ahead of yourself yeah uh i was i was putting in the town meeting um i could i could do this thursday Okay, I can do it. And Travis, do you have a question about that? The time. Yeah. How long are you? Well, should we say seven to nine just to block out the time and maybe we get done earlier? Yeah. I, if we have to do the HR bylaw, which, right. um, you know, we should. Right. I think we should do the HR bylaw then too. Yeah. Yeah. And so seven to nine up. on Thursday. Yeah. I mean, so we need to get this posted six, tomorrow. Eight. Shoot for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm fine with that. We could like... try seven to eight for the finance and then eight to eight thirty on the bylaw. Yeah, or six to seven and seven to seven thirty. But you I have... can't I can't get here in time seven for six. Early. I'd rather be here in purpose. Okay, let's do that. I, mean, I, I don't know. Person. I have to I may have to be remote if I have to pick up my son, but that's OK. I can I can do. All that. right. So we're saying 7 p.m. on Thursday. They're all hybrid, right? And we're trying to go um, hybrid hour and a half, seven to eight thirty. OK. Would you, Ryan, does, does that, that give you time? For you? Yeah. The only thing is I have FinCom sometimes. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey. Yeah. Don't you know how to <laughs> be in two yeah. places at once? <laughs> FinCom yeah. scheduled from 7.30 to 9. Mm, well, we can't do Wednesdays, not enough time. Right? Yeah, that's the problem with this 48-hour right. thing. Day. Yeah. Thursday, Friday is no good. So next week you're out. There. Obviously you're away. So a different continent. Different continent. Yeah. We, um, um. All right. Let's go to your twenty seventh. <laughs> could we do a a Friday more this Friday morning an early conversation? Say it. I don't. Know. I can't. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to be able to look at the numbers and even early early Friday morning I'm going to be driving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You Ryan would. Thursday give you enough time to look at the next two years of capital? The problem remains that it's highly dependent on the other boards and committees to refine their plans. Right. I know, but you don't you have enough we knowledge? Have, we have a, a guess. Yeah. No, I guess it's okay. We're not holding you to it. It's just a it's an order of magnitude thing. So let's look at the twenty seventh again. Well, we're meeting on the twenty eighth. I know, but this would give us a chance for us to solidify. I'd be more apt to be remote next week and do something remotely. You'd rather do remote next week than wait till I the can, night before. Well, I, can't, I can't the 27th. I have a work commitment. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Um, what time zone are you going to be in? No, I'll be back here with a permitting. No, but uh, next, uh, next, the, week. next week. Uh, I'm going to be head in the Wheeling Hospital. That's bad for you then. Yeah. yeah. That's, not a, well, no, that's a bad luck. That's well, let me ask another question. Nathan, is there any chance you could join a meeting Thursday night at 6.30? We went from 6.30 to 7.30 before the FinCom meeting. Um, let's see. Um, that's Thursday, this Thursday, the 16th. The 16th. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if, uh, if Travis and I can see if we can push the contract discussion out, then that gives me time to drive here. So I, I could potentially do that. It's going to be remote, Nathan. The contract is coming. Oh, this. Yeah. Um, this meeting is supposed to. But he wants to look at his numbers. He doesn't want to be driving. Out. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to be driving when I'm talking about the contract. So I, I think we could make that work somehow. Somehow I can make that work. Either I'm remote and then I'm driving, or I'm driving and then. And we can make that work, 6.30 on Thursday. Hey, I just want to make sure, so this is going to be a remote meeting Thursday? I was thinking in person for those okay. of us that can that's make it. Normal. Yeah, okay. And can Aubrey um, come to our meeting on Thursday and do the bylaw with us? So that, so we could schedule that for 7.30 when the FinCom meeting starts? Yeah, I'm just fine with her, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's do that then. Thank you. Nate. Okay, so we're doing six thirty. Thirty on Thursday, and um, Brian, if there's any way you can get us something, you know, by the end of Wednesday, so people could take a look at it ahead of time. But if not, we'll go through it with you. On Thursday. I could actually do six if you wanted to do six, because if that's if the the contract discussion is remote, that still gives me two hours to get here. How about Travis and Kate? Does six work for I'm, you? I'm good. Um, whatever you want. I'm I don't have anything. All right, let's lunch. make it six o'clock. <laughs> I know. All right, let's say 6 p.m. on Thursday. And um, this room's available. Okay. And, yeah. and then um, you've got to get it. Will you posted. make sure it gets posted? Is Jen around or? Yep. Okay. So, right, because it needs to be posted tomorrow, right? Um, and we'll go six to six to seven thirty. Yep. Get her done. Okay. Get her, <laughs> Get her right. done. Yeah. Right. Good. I mean, we're not getting so, it. Done. We're locking down some consensus sure. opinion. Yeah. So we can present to family. I agree. Okay. I agree. So let's um uh, let's, let's I, I just yeah, go ahead, wanted Nate. to repeat. I just wanted to repeat. I I'm I'm sorry because it's hard to to see you, so I don't know when it's okay to talk or not. Um, but I just wanted to repeat what I said before, and I think that. David actually said the same thing as me. I think this discussion was really great. We have not had this kind of discussion before. I want to thank Ryan for all the time he put in to put these numbers together because it made this possible. Yeah. Um, it, so thank you, Ryan. Thank yes. you, Ryan. Yeah, yes. We all agree with that. Amen. Amen. Sure. All right. Uh, so, Ryan, now you have the pleasure of trying to do your TA report in four minutes. No, no. We'll give you a little extra. No. Uh, and that go to page. Um, where are we in our uh, packet? We are down to. All right. Anyway, so the, go ahead, please. You Ryan. See the Clark room, um, the one button hybrid meetings. We're hoping that folks and boards will use this. You just plug in and go, and it, it all shows up, which is very helpful. Um, this yeah. over here, this setup over here. Yep. It's a owl camera plus what you see here on the screen, which is hybrid. So you can bring that up to the healed room and have a meet public meeting up there as well. Great. Uh, that's a full camera and that can connect to the live stream and everything that we do here. For records management, uh, that's just ongoing and continuing. For reorganizing town hall, we've gone through everything with uh, IT and we continue to get uh, solutions and hone in on moving people. So one of the main triggers for moving employees will be the hire of our uh, assistant treasurer collector will be upstairs. So when that person is hired, they will be placed 
where they're going to be permanently. And then you'll start to see a lot of shifting, especially the building department moving into the Nichols room. And then uh, moving on to updates from Aubrey with eight from the ATA on HR. The dispatch candidate should come before you on the 28th. The Board of Assessors is meeting with their final candidate tomorrow and have told me that they will have a selection tomorrow. Excellent. Um, that we will be bringing to you. Well, that won't come to you, but we'll give you some news on it on yeah. the 28th. Hopefully it'll be somebody who can hit the ground running. Chief of Police, they are meeting tomorrow morning? 8.30. 8.30 to go over candidates. So that should um, that should be moving pretty fast now that we've oh. entered the um, the pool side of the, the equation. Talked about Jim Hall. Um, and then bylaws were skipping. Right? So uh, we do have a, we, we have extended an offer to a assistant treasurer collector candidate, just waiting for finalizing that. And we'll bring that to you on the 28th. I can tell you that the person that we've selected and it seems like they want to come work here is a highly qualified person, someone that can really take on a lot of the responsibilities in that office and help him focus on some of the stuff that you're seeing in um, in our requests here, like the chart of accounts and financial policies and things that finance directors normally do. So it's a big win if we can pull it off. If we can, it'll come to you on the 28th. Talked a lot about finances. I'm not gonna talk anymore about that. The procurement, we are procuring firearms, uh, library PFAS system. We have more than a dozen applicants for the house doctor services, which is good news. The uh, DSC, which is Bill Rizzo, Steve Hinton from the MFC, Stephen from the schools, Julie, John, Kate from the select board and myself, I'll be reviewing those and we'll, we'll let you know uh, who's going to be our on-call services. We have very, very good candidates. I've worked with a lot of them personally. Julie's worked with a lot of them personally. So we're going to, it's going to be a win, I think. Good. And then I'm working with the recreation commission on their uh, field maintenance bids. So those should be back on March 1st as well. So I'm glad to be able to work with them. It was a pleasure working with them on that. And then uh, Kim Kelly and I are working on our procurement process generally to have just better forms, better flow, and a, a policy to come before you in the next couple of weeks. Small bridge grants, we got our notice to proceed from the state for work on Maple yeah. Street and Curve Street. Um, many of you are probably tracking this already. For those of you who aren't, we're gonna get some bridges from the state for, for free. So we will be working to start that procurement process this, uh, spring hopefully to start the work in the summer we have until the following year but we want to get ahead and try and get that done uh we're picking the summer months because of travel should lessen some of the impact on, on either project is longer than two months so it won't be too big of an impact i had one quick question on that um when i was reading the plans uh originally we asked for wood and then we couldn't get that but then we said at least we wanted core 10 and we i don't think we got that and remind me nathan if you remembered didn't we have it brown painted or anodized or something? And I don't remember seeing that in this latest set of plans. So I'm just want to make sure that we don't end up with um, ugly aluminum um, border. border. Yeah, uh, so. right. It's there and they know your question's coming because they were like, we got the thing. That okay, good. That's that's because okay. I didn't, as I said, I didn't see it in the spec this time. So uh, and I was looking for it. <laughs> Some quick recognition for our employees. So facilities director, uh, Stephen C. from the school. School Stephen has um, built out a ticketing system for work orders for facilities that we'll be uh, training folks on in the next month. And then uh, he was the one that, that got the doors switched. And so he's paying his worth. Uh, Steve and Stephen are meeting tomorrow to really flush out that, that relationship. So we built capacity and now we're working on moving towards a, a viable town-wide facilities department. Mark Pauly, who some know, some don't, is our cable production manager for Concord Carlisle Cable. He's the, the architect and the mastermind behind all of this, uh, was instrumental and then sat here and, and watched them install it and made sure it was done correctly. So I just wanted to recognize him as someone who has helped the town. And then Jim, Scott, Shane, and Bob helped me move all cabinets and furniture. It was fun working with the DPW crew, a bunch of great guys, and uh, really help out here. Everyone at Town Hall loves them. The only thing of interest in terms of scheduling is uh, I am taking a vacation day on the 21st. This follows the holiday. Liberal, liberal. <laughs> taking that day to uh, ski. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, okay. And then here is the agenda. Act agenda. Um, right. We did anticipate a lot of these would spill over, so we said we we're going to talk about it again on the twenty eighth. Yeah. The idea is we 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 can deliberate and then cogitate and then make a vote decision after we've yeah. But we still need that hour, that yeah. extra hour. Um, maybe put ARPA on there if you want the money for the phones <laughs> to be. A, do. Yeah. So put you know ARPA on there. Okay. Yeah. So that we know we're on there and yeah. and we'll get our work done. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Oh, two. Very good, Ryan. Okay. Like it. Any other um, comments, questions? As I said, there are no minutes to re review. Yeah, that's and nice. um, view the warrants. That no, I looked at that. Um, I do want to just very quickly with the uh, uh, Environmental Sustainability Committee. They are very, very interested in coming to before the select board to talk about the specialized um, opt-in yeah. stretch code. Yeah. Which is, you know, we have a placeholder on the yeah. warrant. So sometime in March, I yeah. think we need to schedule that. Okay. 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 I move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> uh, roll call vote. Arnold I. Brown I. Brown I. Reed I. Snell I. Hey. Excellent. Hey. Thank you all very much. And Good Sean, night, thank you for a, yeah. a great. Uh, Evening us uh, much better technology. I'm so impressed. Yeah. Now